Attention stations on the network. Our broadcast will begin in two minutes from my mark in five, four, three, two, one, mark. That was your two-minute time check, stations. Attention stations on the network. Our broadcast will begin in one minute from my mark. In five, four, three, two, one, mark. That was your one minute time check, stations. Hawkeye Sports Network. From Learfield, Hawkeye Baseball is on the air. Hawkeye Baseball is brought to you by Homewood and Home 2 Suites, preferred hotel of the Hawkeye Radio Network, Iowa's Corn Farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association, and the Iowa Corn Promotion Board. When corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Oak Knoll, an active life care community by University of Iowa Healthcare. Changing medicine, changing lives. And by Wimmer's Meats, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. Now live, this is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. From the campus of Texas Tech University, it's time for Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Live from Dan Law Field at Rip Griffin Park, it's game one of the weekend between the Texas Tech Red Raiders and the 23rd ranked Iowa Hawkeyes. Welcome to West Texas in our broadcast booth alongside color analyst John Evans. I'm John Leo. On the road again, but this time for a series with just one team. All the focus is on the Red Raiders from Lubbock. Off to the best start since 1942, Iowa boasts a 10-1 record and a national ranking coming in at 23rd this week. But a stiff test presents itself in dusty West Texas this weekend. A proud program with numerous trips to Omaha for the College World Series over the past few years. Remarkably, somehow, Texas Tech isn't ranked at this moment. But they're 12-2. and two. They're undefeated at home. It'll be a hostile environment this evening and another challenge that the Hawkeyes are prepared for. It's Texas Tech and Iowa. The Red Raiders and the Hawkeyes live from Dan Law Field at Rip Griffin Park in Lubbock. First pitch is coming up in just a few minutes. Iowa rides into this contest on a seven-game win streak following their midweek win over Coe. 1-0 pitch to Wilmus. Line drive, base hit into left. Here's Peterson at third. He's going to round it. He's headed for home. Here's the throw. It is late. RBI single, Ben Wilmus. And we're Wilmer. tied. Way to go, Wilmer. First pitch to Peterson. Popped up. Shallow left center. Center fielder moving over to left. Left fielder's camped under it. He's got it. Seegers will tag, and he'll head home. He will score. The sacrifice fly from Sam Peterson. Hawks lead 2-1. to one. 0-2 is hit fair down the third baseline. One run is in. Here comes another. Anthony hustling to second. He's there with a two RBI double. 
as Seegers scores, Christensen scores, and it's four to one. Iowa 6-1 as Christensen drives this to center. Wilmis will try to tag and score. It's caught out there in center. Here comes Ben. He will score. And there's the first RBI of Garrett Christensen's career. A sack fly to center. One for four today. First pitch to Tello. Driven into left. This one is fair inside the line. Here comes Wilmis. He will score on the RBI single from Raider Tello. No balls, two strikes. Pitch from Christofferson. Swing and a miss. Foul tip into the glove. Ben Tallman grabs it. And Christofferson strikes out the side, and that'll do it. Hawks win. Hawks win 8-2. to two. Iowa now 10-1 and one on the year. Their best start since 1942. Ho-ho. All right, next up, we'll talk with Jeff Haxton, the fine play-by-play -play voice of the Texas Tech Red Raiders, right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Woo! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Ah, uh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skoglin Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. The Hotel Kirkwood, named the Corridor Business Journal's 2022 Best Banquet and Event Venue, and awarded the AAA Four Diamond Award for Lodging. To make reservations, visit thehotelatkirkwood.com or call 877-751-5111 for more information. We all love a good win, catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. Welcome back to pregame coverage of Iowa Hawkeye Baseball this evening. Down in Lubbock, Texas, it's Iowa and Texas Tech. Joined now by the fine broadcaster of Red Raider Baseball and also basketball, Jeff Haxton. Jeff, thanks for coming on today. John, thank you, man. Welcome to Lubbock. Yeah, it's been good so far. I, I wasn't sure if I was going to see you down here because you were in Kansas City for the Big 12 basketball tournament. I am happy to see you, but I'm, I'm bummed for you that that you're back already this weekend. Well, that's the way it goes. Um, since I've been here, we've had a couple of uh, don't even really show up type seasons or, or not really threatened for post seasons. But in between those, we've had a trip to the national championship game, trip to the Elite Eight, trip to, trip to the Sweet 16. So it's okay. It's all right. We'll, we'll get to baseball. With that being said, I was joking with one of our uh, players last night on the bus. His name's Raider Tello. He's our third baseman. And, and he was talking to me. He said, John, you got to, if, if I hit a home run this weekend, you got to come up with, with something for me, uh, a, a, a way that I know that you, you called it, maybe an adios or something. And I said, listen, Raider, of all the weekends to do that, I can't do an adios this weekend, Jeff. No, Sorry. No, you can't. Don't take that one from me. Uh, that's uh, the, the first time that I called a home run, I used that, and people went crazy for it. So, yeah, ever since 2017, uh, anytime a uh, Texas Tech player hits a home run, I say adios, muchacho. So, it's uh, that one's patented, John. You can't take it. I promise I'm not going to take it from you this weekend. Let's let's talk about this matchup a little bit. You guys are off to an incredible start, 12-2, and two, undefeated at home. We kind of know what we're walking into a little bit just based on what we've been told, this raucous environment. Well... 
I, you know, it'll be interesting to see what it's like with the crowd here today. Um, usually it gets going pretty good, but it's still March. So, I mean, once you get into to conference, it does become a massive home field advantage. The thing you need to worry about more than the the crowd or anything is just the way the wind blows. The wind blows here um, extremely unique. I mean, it, it can look like it's blowing in and you'll have seven home runs hit to left. It can get a cold front and then it'll be blowing out to right. We saw that in a super regional one time where wind came through and carried everything out to right field and that was in June. So the weather here is so unpredictable and your outfielders and even infielders, I mean, we had well, these poor guys from Air Force just just trying to track down balls and balls hit the ground all the time. Really, really tough. So you can hear it blowing right now. But that's the thing you need to worry about the most is, is the old mother nature. Yeah, and I, I think we've got three days worth of, of some pretty good wind. Should change a little bit tomorrow. It's going to howl tomorrow, yeah. So preseason number three in the Big 12, is that pretty much uh, accurate in, in your opinion? Or Dead do you on. See it? Dead on, absolutely. Yeah. Oklahoma State's got a ton of arms. And they always can pitch. TCU is just always really good. The, the question mark is Texas because they haven't done much yet, and they weren't picked for much. They weren't in the top 25, which is just shocking. They're always in the top 25. Went to Omaha last year. So they're the big question mark. We have a lot of question marks as well because we're a completely different team. We like to run. We like to get the ball on the ground. So there's just so much that's uh, kind of different about this year's team. But, yeah, I think three is perfect. When it comes to – the Red Raiders so far this year, what, what's the biggest strength been? Um, I'll tell you, just when they're playing well, it's it's one through nine, they're hard to get out. A lot of times you get into an order and you're saying, oh, here comes a guy, he's probably not going to get on base. That's not been the case for these guys. They've been able to really get on base and then, you know, they're number one in the country in sack flies, they're number one in the country in turn double plays, they got a lot of things going for them, but... I guess that would be the overall strength and still looking for arms, still looking for guys to get people out. Talking with Jeff Haxton, the play-by-play voice of Texas Tech baseball today on our pregame show. You guys are going to go with Brendan Girton today on the mound. What have you seen from him? Brendan Girton's from a very small town in northwestern Oklahoma. It's taken him a while to develop. He got hurt last year, but he's at his true core a fireballer. But if you look at our pitchers, we don't throw many fastballs, so it's kind of perplexing. Throw a lot of breaking pitches from uh, pitching coach Matt Gardner. But he's a guy that... um, you know, has the look and breed, I think, of a closer, but has turned into a starter here. So he'll sit 92 to 93 if he really wants it. He can reach back and get 95. But um, a guy that has to throw strikes, has to keep it low in the zone. He's just a guy that's oozing talent. He's really should be really good for us. People have trouble hitting him. He's just given up a 170 batting average from opponents. Yeah. Uh, I think that's because that fastball is uh, kind of the ultimate out pitch. And, um, yeah, I know that he was – he wasn't horribly injured last year, but just never enough to get healthy and pitch. And we needed him down the stretch with last year's team, so he's ready. I think last time he pitched last year was against us yep. uh, up in Iowa City. Yep. And he got roughed up there. Offensively, uh, who are some of the key standouts for your Red Raiders? I like Gavin Cash, the first baseman transfer from Texas. He's uh, going to be outstanding and very smooth. Kevin Bazell over the other corner. Love him at that third base spot. He's a a guy that we thought was going to be a catcher has turned into a third baseman. And then I I personally love Dylan Carter because he's one of the returners that um, up until this year couldn't hit, couldn't hit to save his life. Now that last chance senior year starting to hit the ball, starting to put in the gaps. I love me some Dylan Carter, and I hope you get to see him work his magic in center field. I, I think he's the best defensive center fielder in the country. All, all three of those guys you mentioned were, were sort of on, on our list. you got a guy that's fourth most hits in the NCAA, uh, 10-game hitting streak for Bazell, and then on-base percentage with, with Dylan Carter. So those are the highlights. What about some of the supporting cast, maybe some not-so-prominent guys that could make an impact this weekend? Well, there's a battle for shortstop going on with Will Burns, who's, I think, 17 years old. He's still supposed to be in high school. Um have uh, Tracer Lopez over there at short trying to do that. They've had some injuries over at second base, so we've had a catcher play in second uh, and Hudson White, and then there's also some battles in the outfield, but um, supporting cast, I think, is a perfect term for Nolan Hester, who's been the leadoff man. He has an amazing ability to get on base. Doesn't wow you with any of his metrics, his speed, his um, 
power or any of that just gets on base and then holds down left field. So those guys have been pretty good supporters. Feels like a pretty big series for both teams uh, with the competition really ramping up, at least from Iowa's perspective. What, what's at stake for the Red Raiders this weekend? Man, to get right, because Oklahoma State will be here right now where we're talking and from a, a week from right now, the Cowboys will be here. Uh, Texas Tech's first series are Oklahoma State, Texas, TCU, right out of the gate. So if you want to buy for a Big 12 crown, you better be shored up. And there's so many moving pieces that Tim Tadlock, he's a tinkerer. So he's trying to get this thing tinkered to the right spot where, all right, this is the person that we know we're going to use when Oklahoma State comes. So this is like, it's a, this is an audition, but it's against the top 25 team in Iowa. So there, there's a heck of a lot on the line. Before we let you go uh, today, Jeff, how do you see this weekend shaking out? Uh, I don't think pitchers' duels would be accurate, maybe offensive explosions. How do you see this weekend shaking out? Man, I think I'll know about five innings into this first game with Iowa because I didn't make the trip to on the road last year. I was in Kansas City. So uh, when I get a look at what you guys have to bring, I'll know a little bit more. So I really don't have that much of a feeling at all. I mean, it's, like I said, it's baseball, man. Would, would high scoring favor you guys, you think, this weekend? The, last year, yes. This year, I don't know so much because – Last year's team hit 85 home runs, and really it was either a home run uh, ball in the gap or a, a strikeout. Um, this year's team's completely different. So when you're having to bunt and you're having to, you know, again, get sack flies to get guys home, I don't necessarily think that it exudes shootout. Sure. Yeah, so we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Jeff, for your time. Uh, have a good call, and we'll we'll see you down the road. John, welcome to Lubbock, man. Have fun. All right. Thank you very much. There he is, Jeff Haxton, the play-by-play -play voice of Texas Tech baseball. Coming up right after this, we'll hear from head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller. You're listening to Iowa Baseball from Learfield. Ooh, got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Ah. Hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? Yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanya Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate, so there's more brain power focused on you. Because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at UIHC.org. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg, and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores, where right now, kids can eat free. Welcome back to pregame coverage of Iowa Hawkeye Baseball this evening. It's Iowa and Texas Tech coming up in just a few minutes. Joined now by head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller. Coach, just a, a final thought on the midweek game against Coe. Well, got what we needed uh, uh, to achieve out of it. Uh, we got a lot of pitchers in the game. Cable, Kate Obermuller got, uh, got his first start. Um, you know, offensively, we, we did just enough, but I felt like we... We pressured them most innings throughout the game. It wasn't like any big letdown or anything. Um, weather wasn't very uh, 
very very good for the hitters to be honest you know it was a windy day blowing in and we hit quite a few balls hard that you know didn't get a result but overall uh, you know we got what we needed out of that game how do you think the guys handled the week leading up to our series with Texas Tech well I was I was, I was a little concerned I was a little concerned just because of the short week and then the, the guys that had to um, stay in Atlanta on Sunday night and not get back until you know midday or, or actually past midday mid-afternoon on uh, on Monday, but we came out with a really good effort uh, against Coe, and then um, you know all I have to base it on to this point was our, our practice last night uh, after we traveled yesterday. Um, a lot of energy, guys were happy flying around, and good attitude, and we got a lot of work done last night. Hopefully that'll continue through the weekend. What do you think you've learned about your team to this point, uh, with all that being said about the past week? Um, they're tough. Uh, great guys uh, care about each other work hard together um, you know we've handled to this point uh, three weeks on the road really well uh, found ways to, to win games when we didn't play well as well as when we did play well um, you know we've got uh, a lot of talent and a lot of depth on the pitching staff and um, Defensively to this point, we've played as well as I, I thought we, we would. I think even better as the year goes on. And, and same with the offense. Feel good about where the offense is at and the balance up and down our lineup, which has really been very um, important in a lot of the games we've played you know, uh, where we had production from you know, where 8, 9, 1, you know, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3. I mean, it's been, it's been a, a mix, which is what I'd hoped for. Um, and, and we've also been able to take advantage of some guys uh, that were slow to the plate, pitchers that were slow to the plate. When it hasn't happened a lot, but when it when it happened, we were able to steal some bases. And uh, I just, uh, you know, I've been through a lot and been on the road uh, the first four or five weeks, you know, most of my career. And, um, you know, we haven't had a letdown, and the guys have handled, um, you know, not going out and playing well when they maybe don't feel that great and when they're tired and, um, you know, dealing with all the stuff we have to deal with, pressures at school along with that when you're when you're on the road. So I'm hoping that we can uh, come down here and, and uh, survive this weekend as far as, uh, you know, not being too tired or anything crazy like that and, and give a great effort because it's an opportunity to, to make a good statement if we can play well. You, you touched on a number of things there, but the balance with the offense seems to be important. Guys like Michael Seegers and, and Sam Honar is really coming on. Yeah, Sam's in a good place right now, and uh, Michael's in a good place right now. Had a big weekend, both those guys down in Mobile. Um, and then, you know, we, we didn't have Kyle Huxtor full speed uh, with, with the knee last week and, and, and played some. He was in a great spot like they were the w previous two weeks, and hopefully we'll get Huck uh, hot again this weekend. And, uh, you know, it's just, like I said, it, it, you know, and Keaton right now is, is, is not – He's not slumping or anything crazy like that, but he's he's not on a tear like he's capable, and it's just it's just nice to know that uh, we've got balance up and down the lineup where we're not dependent on one or two guys to score runs every every night out. Talking with head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller, ahead of tonight's game with Texas Tech. All right, let's talk about this series a little bit. Uh, competition ramps way up for for three straight games, not just one. This yeah. is three straight games. Uh, but, you know, what's at stake here for your team? Not getting too high, not too low. No. Uh, you know, I mean, it's still it's still early in the year. It's it's a great challenge for us. Uh, we you know we've put ourselves in a position where you know this game these games get magnified more by you know the public and by the media and 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 that's natural, normal, and actually that's a good thing. Um, but we're going to approach it just like we do, you know, every game. We're going to go out and try and eliminate free bases and, and do the things we can control and uh, be attacking on the mound and be aggressive with the plate and all those things that we try to do every time out and um, you know it's just at a different place a tough place to play um, you know, most most definitely uh, I've been here two times in my career once in 2003 and once in 2005 when I was at Northern Iowa and uh, you know the, the fans are into it they're they, they're they're funny they're witty but they heckle you the entire game and you know, and we're and we're playing a really good team. And, you know, I, I noticed that you know they they dropped out of one of the polls, and and I was like, I don't know, you know, I don't I don't buy that at, at all. And, and you know, most of the polls are still ranked higher than we are. And um, you know, they have 
great great arms on the mound and they're always a threat offensively and um, you know they're coming off a, a good year with some really good players that you know, they did lose some some position guys but uh, they're they're a super talented team and we're gonna have to play really well this weekend well we'll start things off with with ty on the mound uh, what are you looking for from from ty this weekend well i think i'm um, you know i think he's i think he's due for a breakout game you know i really do and um, there's some history there you know he he uh he pitched the game that we that we pitched really well in the game that we won last year in Iowa City uh, against Texas Tech, and that's another thing. You know, we're somewhat familiar. We we didn't get the three game series because of the weather, but we played two games uh, against these guys at our place last year. And, um, you know, Ty pitched really well against them, so I know he's going to have good feelings going out there. Um, you know, last week was to me just a blip in the radar because I don't think it would have mattered who pitched, uh, whoever was hitting that day with the 45 mile an hour winds at 85 degrees, <laughs> blowing out. You know, you were gonna you were gonna want to hit, and and unfortunately Ty was the the, the guy that uh, you know they hit a little bit in that game early, and then he settled in after that, and did a great job uh, for three innings, getting us to the fifth. Uh, you know, throw 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 same thing the the week before. Um, when we played Sam Houston, I think we just caught them on one of those days and in a good place. And um, and then the, the week before that, you can throw that one out the window. It's opening day, and everybody's jacked and fired up on the opening day. And this will be the first time, I think, when he goes out that it's more of a traditional, normal uh, normal Friday night um, in, a, in a normal three-game series. And I look for Ty to, uh, you know, to have a good outing for us. Maybe help him a little bit with the wind blowing in the way it is today. And then, and then also... Trust in the, the guys behind him to be coming in out of the bullpen. Um, for sure. I mean, you, you, uh, I've never been here when the wind's blown in. You know, it's, it's it's known as a launching pad here, and they they put up each year they put up incredible you know offensive numbers. I think I read somewhere where they scored you know whatever like 600 runs or something last year. And, uh, but but today's a different day, and tomorrow, and it sounds like uh, even Sunday, uh, you know the wind the wind's supposed to calm down a little bit, but it's still going to be a factor. Looks like the it's a very similar day uh, as it was uh, Tuesday at our, our ballpark where. Um, it, it, you're going to be able to get it out down the left field line. And you're going to have to start it out about left center for that to happen with the way the wind's blowing across the field from right field. Uh, but it's going to, it's, it, you know, it's definitely not going to be a launching pad today. Uh, the only thing you worry about with, you know, and I know all pitching coaches uh, have concerns with this, it, and it, it, what it is is just command. You know, when the wind's as strong as it is, um, it, it definitely affects ball flight and, and what it does with change-ups and what it does with sliders. Does it, does it flatten it out? Does it make it break more? Does it, you know, does the curveball or does the change-up straighten out or does it drop more and just trying to get a feel? And I think Ty had to really deal with that. Uh, and I and I noticed the the starter from Southern last Friday. They were both just trying to figure out what they could throw um, and, and get it to go where they wanted with the way the wind was blowing. Uh, it, it isn't that strong of a wind, uh, but it's definitely you know going to factor in on how the ball moves. Just a quick note on on Texas Tech. How are we going to attack the Red Raiders tonight? Well, we're facing uh, we're facing a right hander uh, that's not going to. Uh, throw the nasty, nasty breaking stuff like we saw from the left-hander at, at, at Southern Alabama. Um, he got good slider. You know, he throws his change up some to the left-handers, um, and then he he's a fastball north and south guy. He he's going to run it up to 95. Uh, so he's got got good lot you know good life on his fastball. Not a crazy amount of ride though, like you see sometimes. Uh, you know, with a Friday guy in the 95 range. It isn't going to have as much ride, but still it's going to be a night where our hitters have to do a good job of, of, of taking his fastball away from him. Um, you're, you're, you're going to see him with runners in scoring position still go to that slider and throw a lot of sliders, a lot more sliders than fastballs, like most pitchers do with runners in scoring position. Uh, but key to success tonight is not chasing up and then also spitting on change-ups and, and sliders and really, really focusing in on, on barreling up his fastball. All right, Coach, before we let you go, just a couple other keys to victory other than the one you just named right there. Well, the, the, the sky report, the video that we've seen to this point uh, with Gurton is that he, he's a little bit slower to the plate than we've, we've seen in a while. 
So we're hoping, you know, you got to get on base to, to do anything with that and, and at the right times. But we're hoping we can have a good night, be disciplined, uh, you know, take advantage of some freebies. They haven't fielded that well to this point. Now I say that and they might play the perfect weekend, but um, they, they've made a lot of errors for a turf team. And um, we're hoping we can put the ball in play, not strike out much, make them make plays, uh, maybe get some free bases that way. Also, uh, you know, this guy tonight has walked some guys. So, you know, be patient, take some walks, and then hopefully be able to steal some bags tonight would be nice. Uh, you know, it looks like he's going to allow us the opportunity to try anyway with, with his times to the plate. And then uh, for, for us, it's going to be, uh, you know, great defense uh, by Ty and our great defense for Ty. Uh, and then when Jared Simpson comes in, same story, great defense. And then, um, you know, just eliminating free bases on the mound is always key. All right, Coach, thanks for your time. Let's win the day and, and beat Texas Tech. All right, thanks, John. Appreciate it. There you have it, pregame conversation with Coach Rick Heller ahead of tonight's matchup. It's the Hawkeyes and Red Raiders coming up in just a few minutes. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Knoll, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kids meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores where right now, kids can eat free. Welcome back to Lubbock, Texas. It's Iowa and Texas Tech. First pitch coming in just a few minutes. We'll take our final break of pregame. Starting lineups, batting orders coming up in just a minute. Back right after this, you're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first, get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Weiner, Director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. Woo! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. John Evans and John Leo in Lubbock, Texas. Dan Law Field at Rip Griffin Park. We're getting set for first pitch of a big-time weekend series. It's Iowa and Texas Tech. Let's go with the batting order for the Hawkeyes today. The visitors over there in the third base dugout. Michael Seegers will lead things off. A, a change in the order will have Kyle Huxdorf batting second. Keaton Anthony, the designated hitter, will bat third. In the cleanup spot is Brennan DeRiggy. Raider Tello moves down in the order. He'll bat fifth for the Hawkeyes today. Sam Honar will bat sixth. Seven, eight, nine. Sam Peterson, Cade Moss, and Ben Wilmus. The pitcher for Texas Tech is Brendan Girton. Girton is 2 0 on the season with a 2.35 ERA, 15 and a third innings pitched, 14 strikeouts, eight walks. He's given up five runs, only four of which were earned, an opponent, uh, opponent batting average of 170. He was 3 0 last year, but uh, was injured and didn't see much time following that. As we're ready for first pitch, let's welcome in John Evans, color analyst. Here we go, John. I'm so excited for this. What a great atmosphere. Good crowd here. Imagine it'll keep filling in here as we go along, but uh, perfect, uh, perfect West Texas night. 
capacity just under 4,500 as the first pitch from the righty Girton skips to the backstop, low and outside away from Seegers. We're positioned down the first base line. We split the distance between home plate and first base in Lubbock this weekend. 1-0 pitch to Seegers. Called strike down the heart of the plate. It is 1-1. One and one. The Hawks are over there in the third base dugout, so we get a good look into the dugout from our position here. Texas Tech in the dugout below us. 1-1 one, one pitch to Seegers. Low and outside, ball two. The Hawks are in gray uniforms with Iowa spelled out in black across the chest in the block lettering, gold outline. Gray baseball pants, black gold and white stripe down the side. 2-1 pitch to Seegers. Called strike on the outside corner. It's 2-2. Two and two. The Red Raiders go with black tops with the double T over the heart. Uh, white numbers on the right hip. They've got white baseball pants, black baseball caps while they're out in the field. 2-2 two, two pitch to Seegers. Chopped into the net to the right. They'll do it again at 2-2. Two and two. Curtin with five consecutive fastballs to start off the game, all in kind of the 90, 94 to 96 range. So really trying to set the tone with his fastball, establish the strike zone. Um, you heard coach say this is, uh, this is one where he's going to come after the hitters. 2-2 two, two, hit softly to the right side. Second baseman moves over, and he makes the play. On the run, that's Austin Green, one down. This is the type of guy that the Hawks have traditionally hit reasonably well, you know, really leans on the fastball. Um, if they can just stick, a, stay away from the off-speed st stuff, stay kind of even in the count, maybe ahead in the count, dictate that they're going to see that fastball, and that way they don't have to go trying to chase any of the off-speed stuff that he doesn't always throw for strikes. It's Kyle Huxdorf in there now. This first pitch misses high. That was really his first time he tried to change up up high and just missed. See Kyle move up in the order to the two spot where Raider Tello occupied it for a while. Counts one and one now. Trying to figure out this pitcher the first time through. Kyle's been really good. And, and it's not. It's more of a Kyle's been really good than a demotion of Ro Raider. Raider's also been good on base percentages high. Just good time to shuffle a little bit. Huxdorf down on the count one and two. Great crowd on hand for a Friday night. One ball, two strikes. The pitch from Girton. Downstairs, ball two. Pretty nice uh, night turned out to be. We were afraid it was going to be pretty chilly. It's, it's not too bad. It's probably low 60s, upper 50s at this point. Wind isn't as bad as uh, we were told earlier. Yeah, still have a little sun. The, the wind has died down somewhat. 2-2 two, two pitch, swing and a miss. Huxdorf chased one high, and he's out number two. Yeah, that was a tough one. Went, uh, kind of went off speed there, but got it up in the zone, and boy, it was just too tempting, and Kyle couldn't, couldn't lay off. Here's Keaton Anthony, designated hitter. It's interesting to hear Coach Heller talk in pregame about how he just really hasn't broken out. It's not in a slump. He's hitting 372. Patiently watches this one go by low and outside. Yeah, it, it's always interesting to hear that from Coach Heller. It, God, it's close to batting 400, but um, maybe not reaching the, the peak of the, the potential yet this season. 1-0 to Keaton is low, ball two. And maybe the, the, that shows the, the talent level of Keaton as well, you know, the expectation of, of what you want from him, how you want him to be a leader of the offense. Hitters count, two balls, no strikes to Anthony. Got his hands going, but it's low and outside again. Ball three. Good eye there. Good patience. You know, I, just based on Keaton's history, I, I don't see him swinging 3-0. He tends to, tends to take a pitch, feel good about it. Yeah, he's taking the whole way there. And ball four, low and outside. I think each of those pitches was low and outside. Uh, and Anthony with a good approach there discipline-wise to, to lay off that. We'll see Brennan DeRiggy up now with, with two outs. Hawks talked about trying to get the running game going. I don't think uh, I don't think Keaton Anthony is the guy they're going to try to get it going with. But Brennan's got a hole to hit in, though, as the as the first baseman holds Keaton on. Opposite field power with Dorigi. First pitch to him is in there for a called strike. Beautiful ballpark we've got here this weekend. Large video board in right center uh, on top of the scoreboard out there. A batter's eye in dead center. And a look at the downtown if you peer past the left field wall. A one pitch to Dorigi. Lifts this in the air. 
It is hit to center, left center now. Center fielder Carter will move over, and he's got it for the third out of the inning. So we get on with a walk to Keaton Anthony. Can't do anything with it. And we've played a half an inning in Lubbock. To the bottom of the first we go, Hawks held scoreless. We'll see Ty Langenberg in the Hawkeye defense right after this. You're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. You probably know that a natural gas leak smells like rotten eggs, but what does a gas leak look or sound like? If you hear a whooshing or hissing sound, see dirt, dust, or water spraying from an area, or you get dizzy or queasy, leave the area immediately, then call 1-800-595-5325 once you're safely away. See midamericanenergy.com for more safety tips. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. Bottom of the first inning from Lubbock, we'll get a look at Ty Langenberg and the Hawkeye defense. But first, we'll we'll start with Texas Tech's batting order. They'll go with Nolan Hester. Heard from heard about him from Jeff Haxton, Texas Tech's play-by-play -play radio voice in the pregame coverage. A good supporting cast member. Nolan Hester leads things off. Gage Harrelson bats second. Kevin Bazell. He's their third baseman batting third. And the cleanup spot is Austin Green. Gavin Cash is their best hitter by average. He'll bat fifth. Owen Washburn is a designated hitter batting sixth. 7-8-9 for the Red Raiders. Hudson White, Dylan Carter, and Will Burns. All right, for the Hawkeyes, it's Ty Langenberg. Feels like a big start for Ty. He's 1-1 one one on the season with a 4.91 ERA, 14 and two-thirds innings pitched. He struck out 16, walked nine. Opponent batting average a little bit high, though, at 339. So this feels like a, a, a big-time start for Ty to, to get him back on track. A big spot. His velocity's been down just a little bit so far this year. Um, and as Coach Heller said in, in pregame, kind of ran into a super hot team with Sam Houston and, and just couldn't miss the barrel of their bat. So he'll have to do a good job with that today because obviously this is a good hitting Texas Tech team. Hester leads things off. He's a left-handed hitter. First pitch in there for a strike from Langenberg. The Hawks with their gray uniforms. They got black baseball caps in the field with the big block gold eye on the front panel. This is hit on the ground to short. Seegers will charge it, field it, throw it, out number one. Good job by the Hawkeye defense to get that first out here in the bottom of the first. Yeah, we talked, we've talked. we talked about it every week. Um, it came up in scout again this morning at breakfast. It, it was really dominate strike one. You know, get that count 0 and 1, get ahead, and then, you know, really have, uh, you know, have your pick of how to get these guys out. Ty did a great job there of throwing strikes right, off the, right out of the gate. And he pounds the strike zone again to Gage Harrelson, the right fielder, left-handed hitter, 0-1. Nice outside corner there from Langenberg. Ty's got long sleeves on tonight, a turtleneck underneath his uniform as he's worked an 0-2 count now after the foul ball out of play to the left side. The goal was to kind of, uh, again, obviously get ahead of everybody, but unlike some other teams where then you might mix in off-speed stuff, then it was maybe go at him hard with, with some high speed. Yeah, as, he, as he goes right there, missing the zone outside a little bit, but that's what you were talking about at 93 up and away. Yeah, trying to get kind of that upper upper strike zone, really own that upper zone. Set with the 1-2. This is tapped to the right side and foul right below us. Texas Tech, 12-2 on the season. They're undefeated here at home. They're 11-0. They play a lot of home games. Uh, their losses were in Houston in a, in a tournament to Rice and then 15th-ranked Texas A&M. Next pitch is fouled out of play to the left side. Good battle here between Harrelson and Langenberg. Texas Tech really tough at home in the history of this ballpark that opened up in 2012. 259 and 75. They don't lose much here in Lubbock. 89% win percentage here. Next one just downstairs to Harrelson. Count is two and two. Yeah, Ty's just, uh, just working the zone. Good at-bat from Harrelson. Fouled off a couple of good pitches. And that's, this has been the thing with Ty, making him miss the bat. Ooh, good pitch there. 
And with a breaking ball just outside away from Harrelson. So now the count's full. Langenberg peers in for the sign from Moss. He's got it, the wind up in the pitch. Line drive left side, base hit. Into the uh, left field where Peterson's got it. He'll throw it back in. A one-out single for Harrelson. That was just a battle back and forth, and Harrelson took the win this time. Good piece of hitting there. You know, he, he took that. No, knew, noticed that, that Ty was working the outside part of the plate, and rather than, than try to do too much or get real creative, just poked an opposite field single there through, uh, through the short third hole. First right-handed hitter of the evening for Texas Tech in the three spot. It's Kevin Bazell. Decent lead at first here for Harrelson. First one from Langenberg is low and outside. Ball one. Uh, Bazell is a redshirt freshman batting 351. He's on a 10-game hit streak. Leads the team in doubles. He's got eight. So got to watch out here, the three hitter. Bottom of the first, scoreless game. Next pitch from Langenberg on the ground and through into left field again. Another base hit, back-to-back -back singles for the Red Raiders in the bottom of the first. A little bit of bad luck. I mean, neither ball hit particularly hard. Just seeing eye ground ball singles right through, and, and that's unfortunately been a little bit of what Ty struggled with. You know, it, it just running into a little bad luck here. You know, if he gets that same ground ball and it goes right to Honar this time, they'll roll two and get him out of the inning. Yeah. That's what uh, you're looking for. To eat a ground ball in the worst way with runners on first and second for the Red Raiders in the bottom of the first. Here is Austin Green, left-handed second baseman, stands in, first pitch is outside, ball one. Texas Tech does, doesn't mind getting creative with runners on base here, especially with runners on first and second. You see execute double steals, kind of a hop, hop, go sort of thing. Again, just off the plate outside, 2-0. Langenberg, a little bit of trouble here in the first, but you know, just one pitch away from, from getting out of it. You, and as you mentioned, John, you, let's see what the Red Raiders do on the base pass here. This would be a double steal you know, running count. Next one from Langenberg. Popped up on the infield, tailing foul to the left side. Tello's going to give chase in front of the Iowa dugout. He looks up. He's got it. Two down. Great pitch there from Ty. Behind in the count, 2-0, came right back. He have a high fastball up in the zone that the hitter could see, chased it up, but couldn't get up to it. And so just skied it up in the air, stayed in play for Tello. A little bit of a tough read for infielders looking up. There's just a little bit of cloud cover. And, and uh, as the sun starts to set, that could, could play a factor. Got to keep that in mind. Here's Gavin Cash. He's their best hitter, a 464 average with four home runs, 20 RBIs. He stands in there. And the first pitch is high and outside from Ty. Ball one. Cash is a left-handed hitter. He's also drawn 11 walks but struck out 10 times. Comes up with two outs and two on. 11 extra base hits. So really want to make sure you hit your spots here. 1-0 from Ty. Swing and a miss. Had him fooled 85 miles an hour. Great pitch from Langenberg on that outside corner away from him. Yeah, really well done there. Ty looks in for the sign. He's got it from Moss. Next pitch on its way, just high and away, ball two. Cash stands back in the box. His left foot, his back foot is on the back part of the batter's box, and his front foot is at the back tip of the plate. 2-1 pitch from Ty. Called strike at the knees, 2-2. Two and two. We talked about it with Tommy White when the Hawks played LSU. You know, a really aggressive swinger. Good hitter, but really aggressive swinger. Cash is a little bit like that. So now you've got to try to take advantage of that. Try to see if you can elevate one up in the zone and see if you can get it past him. 2-2 two -two on the ground to the right side. Just foul. That could have been trouble. Good thing it trickled foul. 2-2 two and two will do it again. Two down in the bottom of the first. Hawks went down quietly in their top half of the inning. Trying to hold the Red Raiders at bay. Ty went off speed there. Cash was looking for something a little faster, turned on it, and couldn't keep it between the lines. Langenberg set with the 2-2. Two -two. Here it comes. Just outside. Ball three. Runners will be going now on the pitch. Really good pitch there. But, yeah, now, th now that'll start here. So, again, here, I don't know if you completely want to give in to him. Make sure you throw a good pitch. Um, throw your pitch. If you walk him, so be it. 3-2. On the ground to the right side, Derigi's got it. Nil hustle to the bag and retire Cash unassisted. So good job by Langenberg and the Hawkeye defense to get out of a little bit of a jam in the bottom of the first. We're scoreless in Lubbock. To the second we go. You're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. 
our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel, the Jill Armstrong team, Wiscogman Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Jill Armstrong and her team strive to make every buyer and seller at ease with the real estate process. Contact the Jill Armstrong team, Wiscogman Realty, for all of your real estate needs. Call 319-631-5455. This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of Iowa. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the university and Learfield. Announcers are provided by Learfield and approved by the university. Iowa coming to the plate in the top of the second. We're scoreless. It's Raider Tello, Sam Honar, and Sam Peterson. But as the makings to be a good part of the order with that with that balance uh, that we talked about with Coach Heller in the in the pregame conversation with Coach Sam Honar has really come on as of late. Raider Tello has been solid the whole season, so a good chance for Iowa to get things going in the second against Brendan Girton. First pitch to Tello is low and outside ball one. A couple guys that don't necessarily wow you with the 380 batting average, but on base percentage for Tello is outstanding. Patiently watching this go back, uh, go by, two and zero. Oh. Hawks gave up a couple of hits in the bottom of the first. Got out of the jam. Good job by Ty Langenberg in the Hawkeye defense. Two zero pitch to Raider is downstairs again. Ball three. And this is one of the things on Girton is that you know he's walked for the innings he's pitched. He's walked a lot of guys. Um, you know, last year his his last appearance of the season it was his ninth of the season, but it was against Iowa and that was his last of the year. Um, he is 7-0 and on his career, so it would be fun to hang the, hang the first loss on him. Fires a strike in there to Tello to make the count 3-1 and one to kick off the second. Next pitch to Raider. Line drive, base hit up the middle and into center, and Tello has the first Hawkeye hit in the second. Wow, he really put a charge into that one. It was on the ground, but really connected, barreled it up. Just pounded it right back through the box, did a good job staying on the fastball and just sending it right back where it came from. Field dimensions, 327 down the line in left, 380 in left center, 402 to dead center in front of that black batter's eye, 380 in right center, and 327 down the line in right. Big double T right in shallow center with the black and red Red Raider emblem. Tello's on first. Honar's the batter, and this pitch is inside. Backs Honar off the plate, 1-0. and Sam batting from the left side. To advance Tello, get on himself. Looks like Texas Tech may be concerned about the bunt a little bit. Third baseman's even with the back. Hawks do a good job playing short game. I don't know if Sam's the guy right now, but. Oh, with, with how Girton's missing the zone as it's 2-0 and oh now, maybe try to draw the, the walk first or at least make progress towards that before just giving yourself up. And with the way Sam's been hitting, doing a good job going with the outside pitches with the third baseman in, you create a bigger hole over yeah. there. 2-0 pitch, inside, ball three. Girton can't find it right now as back-to-back counts have been 3-0 to the Hawkeye hitters. And a good job. The pitches haven't missed by a lot, and so good job by Hawkeyes not, uh, not going fishing and not expanding the zone. This one in on the hands, ball four. The first two batters are on for the Hawkeyes in the second. Now, Petey is a guy you could see play a little short game with because not only is he a good sacrifice bunter, but he has the speed to bunt for a hit. So we'll see if uh, Hawkeyes can can draw that third baseman up. You could maybe run in behind him. Um, you could just try to bunt for a hit. Had a lot of options here. But again, nine pitches in the inning, eight balls. So maybe you just uh, maybe you just take your time and make him find the zone and not give an out away. See what happens. Iowa 10 and one on the season, ranked 23rd in the country. The Hawks are outscoring opponents 94 to 33, so that's that's a good measure. Okay, we're scoring a lot of runs, not giving up many either. 
Yeah, Tech is is top 25 program in runs scored, but I was not forever behind them, and they've pitched a ton better. So here is Peterson. First pitch, swing and a miss. Was swinging for the the fences in left center. Just came up short. I don't I don't hate the approach there. Just stay aggressive. Well, especially after the mound visit, you figure you're going to see a fastball. It, it might be a little less than his high velocity, and so if you get one in the tunnel you're looking for, take a rip at it. Corners are in. Now Peterson squares to bunt, pulls it back, gets away from the catcher, but no advancement by the runners there as it's now one and one. Catcher got four. He was fortunate there. The ball kind of bounced off of him and forward into the into the field of play. This is a really short backstop here, so um, runners will have to be ready. If, if a fastball misses the catcher, um, it could come screaming back to him and, and give a play at a base. Peterson squares to bunt again, pulls it back again, and another ball is fired in there by Girton. It's low, two balls and a strike. Nobody out in the top of the second here in Lubbock. Two on for the Hawks. You're seeing the third baseman stay home on the bunt call. The first baseman is screaming in, and they're basically doing the wheel. Second base coming this way, shortstop covering second base. 2-1 pitch to Peterson. He squares to bunt, puts it down the third baseline. Third baseman comes to pick it up. Throw to first, not in time. Peterson beats it out. All right. And that was what we talked about. That was, Petey could not only bunt for the sacrifice, but he could also get himself a hit. Third baseman had stayed home. So when Petey put it down that way, perfect bunt. Pitcher couldn't jump off to cover it. Third baseman had to come flying in. But by the time he got close, that wasn't even a close, that was not even close play. He was through the bag. Yeah, yeah. PD beat it by by two steps, and so that'll give Moss a big chance here to break something open early for the Hawks. Top of the second, we're scoreless, but the Hawks have the bases loaded with nobody out. Here is Cade Moss, first pitch to him, right down the middle, called strike. So, you know, you've seen you've seen so far this year. They've bunted with Cade a little bit. Now, maybe with the bases loaded and a, and a pitcher that's struggling for control, you might not want to do anything quite so exotic here. Moss takes this one outside, evening the count at one and one. Because you, you can't really safety squeeze with the bases loaded. Um, so you're, you're a little bit stuck in that case. You'd almost have to bunt it hard, almost at second and short, and try to make the play there. But you're asking Cade to be awfully precise on those. The Red Raiders would trade a run for a couple outs with their infielders playing back. Next pitch to Moss is outside. Two and one. The third baseman's even with the bag, but the middle infield is, is double play depth. So they're, they're going to try to turn two and uh, on a ground ball. Hopefully, Kate doesn't hit one. Two balls and a strike to Moss, the Hawkeye catcher. He's the eight hitter this evening. Next pitch to Moss. Downstairs, ball three. No place to put him. And Cade can afford to be a little selective here. Yeah, Cade can, Cade can really pick a spot here and, and you know just know that he's going to get another pitch if, if he doesn't like the spot so you know maybe look for a fastball out over the plate a little bit you know outside see if he can drive one to right center field um, if not three one swung on and missed counts three and two aggressive pitch aggressive swing yeah came back up there he was 96 um, pretty much right down the center of the plate just overpowered Kate a little bit there so still got a chance here Nobody out. Bases loaded for the Hawks. Top of the second. 3-2 pitch to Moss. Line drive into right center field towards the gap. The right fielder's back. He's got it. Runners will tag. Here comes the throw into third. And safe. The run will score. Tello is in there. Hawks have the lead 1-0 and advance a runner to third in the meantime. Texas Tech crowd's a little feisty, but the ball was laying on the ground after he placed the tag. So there, <laughs> there really was no question. Even if the tag got him, the ball wasn't in his glove. So good job there. Good piece of base running to go ahead and take third there. Hawks have another chance here for Ben Wilmus. Iowa leading 1-0 in the top of the second, courtesy of the sacrifice fly from Cade Moss. Look for, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to look for Petey to be active here on first base. Yeah, Texas Tech a little bit ready for it. They uh, threw it over here to first to, to check on him. One out, runners on the corners. Iowa one nothing. Here's Ben Wilmus in the starting lineup. Right fielder, bottom of the order for the Hawks. Good to see Ben in there. Chance to produce early for Iowa. They'll check on Petey again at first. Dives back in there safely without a tag. Yeah, Ben's a guy you could see bunt as well. Handles the bat well on that side, but you might give Petey a chance to run and then see what happens. 
Third baseman still playing in. We could, there Peterson goes. This one is outside. They throw it down to second. Not in time. Almost took out his pitcher who had to tumble to the side of the mound because that throw from the catcher was so low. Threw a low fastball on the turf. And it, that's the, really the best way to get it there. It's going to skip on the turf, but uh, tested Gerton, Gerton's agility there to get out of the way. Now Iowa can really get creative with Wilmus and a 1-0 count. Runners on second and third. Pitch to Ben is high and a bit outside, rather outside 2-0. and And you pulled in both corners now. You still have the middle infield deep, so they're going to concede the run. Uh, infields or the corners are afraid of maybe a little short game still. Wilmus hitting 333. Pitch to him, low and outside. Ball three. Top of the order in Seegers is on deck. Girton doesn't want to walk the nine hitter. We'd well, be all right with that. We'd be perfectly fine with that to bring it up for Seegers and his newfound power juice. <laughs> Had a great weekend in, in Alabama. 3-0 pitch to Wilmus. Downstairs, ball four. Ben draws a four-pitch walk. Great job. Hawks in business again with the bases loaded and one out. And again, most of those pitches were relatively close to the zone. Good eye from Wilmus to go ahead and force him to, force him to come around, and when he couldn't do it, just take his base. We'll have time called as the pitching coach for Texas Tech is on his way to the mound for a mound visit. Iowa won nothing in the top of the second. Bases loaded and one out. Hawkeye Baseball is brought to you by Riverside Casino and Golf Resort, home of the Draft Day Sports Lounge, a luxury hotel and spa, five restaurants and more, just minutes south of Iowa City. This feels like a big-time series for both teams. Uh, and from the Iowa standpoint, okay, 10 and 1, uh, the, the ante really gets raised with, with this competition this weekend with, with Texas Tech. So almost like, hey, yeah, we're, we're going to prove that, that we are this good. We talked about it in the LSU game, you know, one game, you had to show you looked the part. Well, now you take the next step. Now it's three games and you have to look the part. And this Texas Tech team will be, will be ready. And you don't have to go win all three games. I mean, would we take all three and jump on a plane Monday morning? Absolutely. Great. But, you know, let's win two. Let's win the series. Go home and, and uh, you know, probably hang your hat on, on a top 25 series win by the end of the season. Right. Red Raiders pick to finish third in the Big 12. All right, here's Seegers. Bases loaded, one out. Time called from behind the plate. Michael popped up to the second baseman to begin today's game. Seegers stands in there with his gray baseball pants pulled up just below the knee. First pitch swing and a miss. Michael's got those black socks with the three stripes across the calf. Well, you hate to see that's the, that's the expanding the strike zone. That was up in the zone, maybe, maybe not. Um, but, you know, those belt-high fastballs, you'd rather make the umpire call that on 0-0 with an umpire, a pitcher that's struggling. Michael again goes after one that's high and fouls it back to the net. All of a sudden, Seeger's down in the count 0-2. Mound visit seemed to be beneficial for Gurton <laughs> through the first couple of pitches afterwards. You know, he really hasn't been able to locate much of anything, so it's it's hard to guess here on him what the pitch is coming either. 0-2 to Michael. Fouled back to the screen. That was a breaking ball, a lot slower. Looped in there, and, and Michael got a piece of it. That's what you got to do with two strikes. And the other thing we haven't really talked about yet, Texas Tech fielding-wise, not, not off to a great year, not, not off to a great start this year. Correct. They, you know, considering they play most of, these games, most of their games on this perfect turf, um, a little surprising, but the wind could factor into that as well. 0-2 to Seegers, high at the eyes, 1-2. And, and that, that was one of the, the keys was, hey, put it in play. Make them make the play to get you out and earn that out. Yeah, put a lot of pressure. You know, on one hand, they've turned top 21 double plays, tops in the country or uh, way up in the rankings in the, in the country. Um, but on the other hand, 960 fielding percentage. 1-2, Michael shoots it right to the first baseman, doubled us up. First baseman catches it and throws it to second. To double up Peterson at the bag. Mm. That was not. He just put his head down and took off. Never once glanced back. Um, either thought he had a read on where the uh, fielders were, but he was mistaken. Ah, good play by Texas Tech to limit the damage. But the Hawks get on the board first. one nothing. We're back right after this for the bottom of the second. You're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanya Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate, so there's more brain power focused on you. 
because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at UIHC.org. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Iowa leading 1-0 as we get to the bottom of the second over Texas Tech. Fred Raiders coming to the plate in just a moment. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. All right, the Hawks got one in the second. Could have been more, just an unfortunate line drive that, that doubled us up there. But Ty Langenberg, an ability, uh, opportunity to, to pitch with the lead. As he pounds the strike zone on the outside corner to the left-handed hitting Owen Washburn. He's their designated hitter. This is the part of the order that Ty's really got to attack with strike one. I mean, you want to do it all the time. You know, Washburn's hitting 0-59 and 17 mm. at bats. You got a 235 hitter. Uh, Dylan Carter does a really nice job in the eight hole, but then 115 in the nine hole. Langenberg just missing outside on a couple of pitches. So now two and one. And if you look back to the top of the second, this is where Iowa started to do their damage on Texas Tech. You don't want to give it back to him in the bottom of the second. Two one from Langenberg outside ball three. And you heard Coach Heller mention in pregame, we've talked about it. Game after game after game, you know, limit free bases, eliminate free bases, give yourself a chance that way. He's worked back to an even, uh, rather a full count at three and two. Went with off speed on the outside corner. He trusts that today. Good breaking ball up high. Got a call up in the zone. Three, two pitch, outside, ball four. So the leadoff man is on. That's Washburn on the walk. That that's probably been the one thing you can look at with Ty's starts to this point has been the has been the slider, has been the breaking ball. Hasn't been as sharp as it has in years past. Yeah, last year he was very good with it. Became a became a uh, uh, just a dominant pitch at, in stretches and just having a little bit of trouble um, finding the location right now. So teams are being a little bit more particular. Hudson White is in there, squares to bunt, pulls it back, and this pitch sails. High one and oh. White is their catcher, as you mentioned, John, hitting 235. He was last year's Big 12 freshman of the year, so this is a good player that's in the box right now. Langenberg set with the 1 0. Here it comes. High and tight ball two. And if I remember right, last year he did uh, he did a little bit of everything last year in Iowa City. Played second base one game, caught another game. Um, so a really nice just baseball player. 2-0 pitch from Langenberg, fouled out of play straight back. Sun beginning to set. Taking away our cotton candy colored sky this evening. They've got the cool red uh, accent lights on their light poles, though, that give you a little extra, yeah. extra ambiance here. A lot of red around here. 2-1 pitch from Langenberg. Called strike on the outside corner. That's a good pitch right there. Yeah. Had a location given to him, and he hit it, two and two. Yeah, 84 miles an hour right on the, just on the outside part of the dish. He's got the sign he likes, 2-2 two, two pitch, fouled back. We'll do it again at two and two. Yeah, the scouting report has a couple different ways. You try to get him with velocity up, or you try to get him with the, you try to get him with the, the spinning stuff away. So Ty, that time went fastball, couldn't quite get it past him, see if he goes back to, to spinning away. In the meantime, we'll check on the runner at first. Back in there. Washburn is the runner at first. Doesn't have any stole, uh, stolen base attempts yet this year. This is lifted into shallow oh. center and down for a base hit. That thing felt like it was in the air forever. We're playing a little deep in the outfield. Couldn't quite get to it in time. A 
That a was single for White. A really, really good breaking ball down and outside of the zone, but an even better piece of hitting there as he went down with it, just kind of forked it out there, flew it over the shortstop, thought maybe Peterson's made some spectacular plays, thought maybe he'd be able to come in and get it, but no dice there. And well, we'll see Carter now with nobody out in the bottom of the second. Iowa leading 1-0. The Red Raiders have three hits so far compared to Iowa's two. Corners are in right now, Dorigi and Tello. Carter's a left-handed hitter with a wide stance in the box. He squares to bunt. Langenberg's pitch is... Just wide. Just outside. Scoreboard shows an out, but there's not an out this inning, correct? No outs. Nobody out. First two guys have gotten on. Two innings in a row now. Squares the bunt again, pulls it back again. Ball two. He's trying to give himself up here with the sack bunt opportunity. Carter, for being a, a center fielder, he's built pretty big. He looks like he knows what he's doing here, but if a guy wants to get himself out, you go ahead and, and take the out. There, Ty fires in a breaking ball. Called strike. Two and one. Carter was squared to bunt that time, but breaking ball hard to bunt, so he pulled it back and, and just took a strike. Assume that Ty keeps going to that if he can continue to throw it for a strike. Two one pitch on its way home, swing and a miss. So he pulled the bunt totally back. And he thought maybe the and maybe once it got to two zero, maybe it was more of a take because again it was a strike. It was a low breaking ball, um, so maybe it was just more of a take sign than anything. Langenberg's 2-2, two, two, just high, just outside, counts full. When Ty's tried to dot it, he just hasn't been sharp to dot the spot. So see what he does here on 3-2. Long pause on the rubber, 3-2 pitch in the air to left field. Moving back is Peterson near the wall, and it's gone. A home run that just carried and carried out of here. A three-run shot for the Red Raiders, and they're up three to one. How'd that get out of here, John? Well, there isn't even really as much wind as we had. What wind we had, that's the way the ball is carrying. It's carrying from right field foul pole to left field foul pole. That ball got up 98 mile an hour exit velo and an over 40 exit angle launch. So not one of those where you normally would think, boy, that one's going to go. Um, but boy, you could see PD tracking it, and you could see it was going to be a problem. And the one guy with pop at the bottom of the order gets you. I have to redo it now as Will Burns, the shortstop, the nine hitter, swings over the top of a breaking ball. Texas Tech three to one now in the bottom of the second. A one pitch on its way home. Outside ball one. Boy, off the bat, I thought that was right to right to Sam. Maybe he had to take a couple of steps back. I didn't dream that it would get out of here. I might have slow fist pumped that one. Ooh. Counts two and one to Burns. Hey, if they can do it, we can do it too. Opposite field. We got guys in our lineup that can take it out there. Yeah, you just need to do your job here. Start the inning over and get an out. Yep. Two and two is the count. Breaking ball in the inside corner. Still nobody out in the Red Raiders second. They lead this one three to one. Two two pitch from Ty. Fouled back to the screen red raiders have been have been on it so far to, to, to start this one not too many swings and misses no and, and i know coach heller talked about that with ty of of you know you you gotta be you and you gotta go back and get outs here now and he gets a swing and a miss right there on a breaking ball way outside burns went after it first strike out of the day for ty first out of the inning in the second and he talked to him about you know those free bases you know you turn a you turn a solo home run into a into a a three-run home run. Of course, there's a single in the middle there, but you know, you don't need to help a team like this. You know, you you, you just throw strikes and make them beat you and see what happens. Top of the order in Nolan Hester gets the hands going. This pitch missing low. Ball one. Hester and uh, first baseman Brendan Derigi were teammates for the last few years at Wofford. Hester fouls this off to the left side. Wofford doesn't have a, uh, I was talking to Brennan last night at, uh, at practice, and Wofford doesn't have a, a grad program. So in a lot of cases with the COVID year, the players have had to leave um, for their fifth year. So kind of sprinkled all over. Hester bends back for a pitch that's 
high and tight, two and one. And in this case, uh, two teammates are crossing paths here. Isn't that funny how those how that happens. Of all the teams to play, you, you know, you, you wind up competing against one another. Ty missing again outside now, three and one. Just not sharp. Simpson warming up in the bullpen. Probably don't want to go to him quite yet. 3-1 from Langenberg. Fouled back to the net. 3-2 and two now. Yeah, with Ty this last weekend was uh, in a similar spot where a bit rocky through the first two and then stabilized the last three innings of his start to get through the fifth. Going to need something similar today. Hawks down 3-1. This is on the ground to second. Honar slides to stop it, throws it to Derigi out number two. Good play there by Honar. Great job there by Sam to range to his left, come up with it, jump up quick and throw it over to get Hester. I, I appreciate the positivity. The one difference I would make is the Texas Tech lineup might be a little more potent than Southern. That's right. That's right. Maybe. Pretty safe bet there. <laughs> Here's Harrelson. Grounds it Ooh. foul to the right side. Five, ho five hold the first base coach. The crowd is on him. Yeah, he's going to have to hear about that one. Just came up a little early on it. Didn't didn't trust his hands. Of course, I'm not. It's daily one. drills. It's those daily drills, I coach. Want, I don't want to take that <laughs> hop in the chest either. No balls and a strike to Harrelson. This one is put into center and in front of Huxdorf for a two-out single. Took a funky hop on him out there. That just had a lot of topspin at tail. Yeah, a weird little spinner that uh, that Huck kind of came in on and. Um, big hop with some spin uh, almost got away from him. Two down in the second. Texas Tech has scored three runs. They lead it three to one. With two outs here, just try to get this three hitter in Bazell who singled his first time up an inning ago. Bazell, another one of those guys, 11 extra base hits, so he. You're going to need to execute your pitch here. Don't uh, don't make this any worse right now. First pitch to him. Fouled back to the net. 0-1. Yeah, Bazell, scouting report for Iowa has Bazell as his, their best hitter, most patient. Uh, so again, you're going to have to you're going to have to pick the spot where where Coach McGrath feels like there's a hole. Go get it. This is fouled off the end of the bat to the. On deck circle to his right. Ty's done a good job now. 0 oh and 2. See if you try to mess around, get him to chase. But like you mentioned, he's he's patient, got good plate discipline. Well, all hitters have good plate discipline when they're 0 0 or ahead in the count. 0 sure. 2, oh 2, you kind of lose a little bit of that. 0 oh 2 off the end of the bat to Seegers at short. He'll flip it to second in time. Got the force out at the bag for the third out of the inning. Turned into a close play when he kind of capped it out yeah. there. All right, the Red Raiders score three on the three-run homer by Dylan Carter. Texas Tech three, Iowa one. We're back for the third right after this. You're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first, get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Wiener, director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. At MidAmerican Energy, we want to help keep you safe around power lines and electrical equipment. Always assume a power line is energized, even if it's on the ground. To avoid the risk of an accidental shock or electrocution, Avoid touching a power line with anything. And when you see high voltage warnings on transformers and substations, stay away. We care about you and your safety. Get more tips at midamericanenergy.com. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Kyle Huckstorf, Keaton Anthony, Brennan DeRiggy do up for the Hawks in the top of the third. Got a little work to do trailing Texas Tech three to one that's the tough break too for me you know you go back to the top of that inning Hawks had bases loaded one out um, actually bases loaded no out and come up with just the one run um, get the sack fly reload the bases um, and then get the hard luck double play whereas they're uh, 
there what felt like a semi-routine fly ball to the left carries out over the fence and, and turns into a three-run home run. So not the end of the world. Just need to need to start battling back. Keep keep doing good at bats. It's just the third inning here. Chipping away will be the focus over these next few innings. Here's Huck Store. First pitch to him is fouled back off the umpire, 0-1. If I had to guess, I'd say the final score will not be three to one. Yeah, I, just, I, I would I would agree but based on you know, the conditions tonight and, and the fact that you know, Iowa early going has done well against this pitcher getting on base. You, you mentioned the, the bad luck on the on the line drive double play. Uh, but for that, I was really in business. See if they could try to do it again. Oh, one pitch. Whoa, way high ball one. So if you kind of if you kind of take that approach where, you know, three runs for them isn't going to win it. And so you just now start battling away. You've got you got seven innings to score three, four, five more runs. Ooh. Next pitch goes to a breaking ball that we rarely see inside. Ball two. Huck, Huck somehow able to lay off of that one. Two balls and a strike. Girton is set. Out of the wind up in the pitch. Swing and a miss. Two and two. Good pitch. Went back to the fastball down in the zone there. And Huck swung over top of it. Kyle struck out in the first 2-2 two -two pitch. That's high again. Ball three. Wow. What, what would a leadoff walk do right here? It would be a heck of a start. I mean, that's the again, that's the idea. You get you get Keaton and you get uh, Derigi up with people on base. Now there it is. Leadoff walk. Breaking ball low and in at the shins. And Kyle did a great job to not swing at that because it wasn't close. Yeah, he's really, Gurdon has really struggled to find the strike zone. And so... Uh, again, that, that just kind of lends to the, you know, Hawks won't be stuck on one if they continue to have quality at bats. Keaton Anthony had a quality at bat his first time up. He walked, and he's in there now. Now they fake the steal. Pitches outside to Anthony. Threw it down to first, and that was close. I don't know if that was a mix-up in signs or what that was. Huckstorf took off for a second, but he came back. So what, this, what the Hawkeye scout was, was Gurton has two moves to the plate. He's got a glide step, and he's got the, kind of this, this standard high step. Get back to that in a second. 1-0 pitch to Anthony. Skied in the air, straight back. Looks like it's going to get out of play, and it will. And so there's a number of base runners for the Hawkeyes that have the green light to go, but then if they see the slide step, they jam on the brakes. In that case, he slid slide step, jammed on the brakes, had to really beat feet close, back. Close, close over here at first. One ball, one strike to Anthony. The pitch on its way home. Whoa, way up and in, ball two. And you see Huck now. <laughs> Huck isn't leaving. He's not even getting a good secondary lead right now. So uh, he's just kind of planted. <laughs> Mitch Bow goes over and gives him a little chat. So maybe he's giving him a new pep talk to get him moving again. 2-1 to Anthony. Mm, fouled it straight back. Looked like he was on it at 85 miles an hour, but got under it and scooped it out of the stadium. A little up and in breaking ball that uh, looked too good for Keaton to lay off of and, and just fouled it back. So I got to protect with two strikes. Left fielder playing way deep. He's just a few steps away from the track. 2-2 two -two to Anthony. Drives this one to left, carrying well, but the left fielder is camped under it, and he's got it for the first out. Just missed it. Yeah, I don't know how yeah, the track man data didn't come through very good on that one, but with that one, that, the launch angle must have been it was it was more up, I guess, because that looked that looked harder hit than the ball that went uh, that, that went out of here. But good chance now for Derigi to to move up, and we'll, again we'll see if if Huxdorf can regroup over there at first base. Well, this is a good this is a good example of, of sticking with it. In the top of the third, down 3-1. They'll check on Huxdorf at first. He's back in. All right. Iowa down 3-1, to one, but a lot of good swings, a lot of good at-bats, good contact, been barreling it up. Stay at it. Yeah, you won't uh, You won't throw that one back from Keaton either. Deriggi swings for the fences, comes up just empty, 0-1. Good fastball right across the top part of the zone there that Brennan just couldn't quite keep up with. Got time called by the home plate umpire. We do have the pitch clock here, and we do have replay here. So we've got both of the uh, semi-unique characteristics. Next pitch to the Hawkeye first baseman is inside ball. 
one. We'll give you the umpires. Home plate umpire is Casey Mosier. Over at first is A.J. Wendell. Demond Thomas is at second. Wes Hamilton down the line at third. 1-1 one, one pitch to DeRiggy. Long pause on the mound. And now the pitch. Downstairs gets away from the catcher. Huxdorf doesn't go. He stayed at first. Catcher couldn't locate it. I don't think Huxdorf could either. Otherwise, he would have easily taken off for a second. But I still think that's the thing. When you see the catcher has no idea, go. Yeah. He, 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 otherwise, the catcher's the best actor in the world. And if he can get you that way, he, deserve, he deserves it. But you just got to get a better secondary lead and read. 2-1 to DeRiggy, fouled to the left side. Now it's 2-2. Two and two. Still got Huxdorf at first with, with one out. A couple of opportunities here for Iowa in the early going. Well, and interestingly enough, I think the very first the very first pitch when Huxdorf was on first probably played a role in that. He's just, you know, he's not got, he hasn't gotten a good secondary lead since then. Two balls, two strikes, one out, pitch to DeRiggy. Line drive into left field, but right to the left fielder. And it's caught for the second out of the inning. One, <laughs> 106 exit velocity. Just hammered that ball just right at him. And the left fielder, um, even though he's opposite field, was extremely deep and in a perfect spot. You know what they say early in games. Well, these will start to fall. These are, these will start to fall. And Hawks need them too. Trailing three to one in the top of the third. Two down. Here's Raider Tello. Huxdorf still on first. Curtain comes set. And check on Kyle at first. Dives to the back corner of the bag. Yeah, Kyle's got to trust his read here. And Gerton might have just kind of moved a full slide step every time now and has kept Kyle close. Tello swings at the first pitch, hit on the, on the ground to the left side, shortstop throws it away. Tello would have beat that out anyway, and he's on with two outs. And it has been scored as a base hit for Tello. A, a good effort by the shortstop Burns, but that throw was way uh, down the line here towards home. Yeah, that, Tello beat it out. That was, uh, gosh, 10, 15 feet inside the line there. Had no chance. Uh, Even with an accurate throw, Raider probably beats it out, but it, it's a lot closer. Now let's make him pay here with two down. He tried a good turf throw. Just uh, <laughs> obviously the line was well off. Yeah. Here's Honar. Two on, two outs. First pitch to Sam is high. Ball one. Good take there from Sam. That ball's... That ball is that high strike that doesn't get called in college. Yeah. And so we talk about that a lot. Yeah. And so that's a that's a great take. That ball's probably a strike at the uh, in the major leagues, but it's not here. One oh pitch to Honar. Mm, scooped it foul to the left side. One and one with two outs. Huxdorf will be going on contact and anything between the white lines. Got to imagine that if Sam can drop one in the outfield that Huck would score to uh, Tello rather he'll be on his horse moving with two outs, he's at first. 1-1 one, one pitch to Honar. Called strike right down the middle, one and two. Look how deep the left fielder is. and I mean, that's an opposite field play for Honar. He's done, a, he's done a really nice job the last three or four games of serving balls into left field. So if you get an outside pitch here, just serve it up over there and drive in a run. One ball, two strikes. A lot of looks at second. The pitch to Honar. Swing and a miss. Down he goes for the third out of the inning. The Hawks get a couple of base runners, can't score. Bottom of the third we go. Texas Tech three, Iowa one. This is Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! 
Bottom of the third inning, Texas Tech three, Iowa one. New pitcher on the mound is Jared Simpson. We'll give him, we'll give you the lowdown on him in just a minute. At the game or at home, Wimmer's premium quality hot dogs and sausages will score with family and friends. Take the highest quality beef and pork and you get the best tasting hot dog. Wimmer's, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. All right, Ty Langenberg's night is done. He just got through two innings. Hawks turn it over to the bullpen. We'll see uh, Jared Simpson, tall lefty for Iowa. Jared's been really good for the Hawks so far this year. Jared in three appearances. He's 2-0, and oh, pitched 12 and two-thirds innings. Just given up five hits, a couple runs. He's walked five and struck out 17. So 142 ERA. Opponents hitting just a buck 19 against Jared. So it's actually one of those interesting things, you know, that you prepare. Not that not that Tech hasn't scouted Jared, but you know, you come off the you come off the uh, the righty throwing in the low 90s, and then you move to the you move to the lefty throwing up low 90s and can touch 94, 95. Well, another challenge for the Hawks, trailing 3-1 in the bottom of the third. This is the first uh, the first starter that's really had I guess call it more serious issues if you want um, you know, Trying to get Ty's line pulled up here well, Austin Green will lead things off for the Red Raiders in the third first pitch from Simpson in there called strike Big spot for Simpson here too though. Uh, I mean you're asking him to get you Probably three or four innings uh, of holds, uh, considering we're down three to one. I think you'd like four or five, sure. really. Uh, if you could hand the ball still to Christensen, then that'd be great. Or Christofferson, that'd be great. Yep. Counts one and one. Simpson just missing up and in. And we've talked about it a lot. You know, you've still got Luke Llewellyn, and you've got Jacob Henderson, and you've got you've got arms down there to to help get you there. It's it's now you're going to need the bats to get. To get a couple runs. Mm, Simpson pounding the zone low and in, but just missed. So it's it's two and one. And to your point, you're gonna need uh, you're gonna need something good to happen with your pitching staff. Simpson works only out of the stretch. He's ready with the two one. Fires at home inside ball three. And going back to Langenberg, two innings pitched, five hits, three earned runs, a walk, a strikeout. Um, uh, but kind of to the point, you know, really had a hard time. 57 pitches, 34 strikes. Just couldn't couldn't get that final strike for an out. 3-1 is outside and high ball four. So a leadoff walk for Texas Tech in the third. Ty will get back to work. He'll, he'll continue to to work at improving this year, not having the start to the season that, that he, he certainly thought. Had a little change in his delivery. Um, when he went to the Cape last summer and you know still just just kind of working through things you know they're all trying to get a little bit better you know either a little bit faster locate a little bit more, better more consistently this ball gets away from the catcher and Texas Tech will try to advance this and the throw down to second not in time so the Red Raiders are one for one on their past ball advancements Hawks have had a couple of opportunities to advance 90 and, and haven't really taken advantage Texas Tech now has a runner in scoring position with nobody out in the third pitch was low and outside away from Gavin Cash grounded out to Derigi in the first yep. Simpson's next pitch is a called strike on the outside corner really good jump there when the ball got away and uh, Moss got after it quickly was able to make a, a good strong throw down there but the head first slide to the outside of the bag beat the uh, Seegers tag it's a good recovery by Moss to get that ball down there. It was a great throw. Next pitch from Simpson just off the plate. Outside away from the left-handed hitter, Gavin Cash. Batting average of 464 coming into today's game. Yeah, Simpson will try to lefty on lefty. Simpson will really try to work the outer half here, even with Seegers on a little bit of a shift. 2-1, sawed off foul to the left side. 2-2, two two, good challenge pitch there by Simpson he went right down the middle with it I don't know if cash was expecting that or ready for it or maybe just had enough spin on it where he couldn't time it up the right way almost got it past him just couldn't quite uh, couldn't quite get it all the way there cash did a good job fouling it down the third baseline 
Two balls, two strikes, nobody out, runner on second. Simpson's ready, the pitch. Line drive right to Seegers. He throws it to third and it's a poor throw. And it gets by Tello and Cash will wind up at second now. Two in scoring position with nobody out. You don't see Michael Seegers make poor choices very often, but that was one. Generally speaking, when you've got the play, if the ball is, if you're the runner on second and the ball is hit anywhere to your left, you go. In that case, Seegers was basically right behind the bag. The ball was hit right to him, so the runner takes off. Seegers had to jump, jump switch his feet all the way around and make the play. You know, as we talked last half of the inning, it's three to one. Three to one isn't going to be the final score. Get an out. Don't put now two runners into scoring position because you throw the ball away. It took a perfect play to get the guy out. We couldn't make it, and now, now the Hawks are in a little bit of a bind. Yeah, you, you, you sort of understand the the thought process if if everything goes perfectly, and, and it just didn't right there for the Hawks. We'll have a uh, mound visit from pitching coach Sean McGrath, and, and now you put yourself in a really tough spot, down three to one, nobody out, and a portion of the lineup that, that really hurt us in the second, exactly. uh, the, which is the bottom half, and it, it'll be Washburn who led things off for the Red Raiders with a, a, a walk in the second. He would score on the three-run homer. We got the guy that hit the three-run homer coming up here, probably in this in this inning now with, with nobody out and runners on, on second and third. And they're already up by two. Yeah, you're gonna need to you're gonna need to attack Washburn here. You're gonna need to be ready for you know Tello's behind third base. You, know, you got a guy hitting under 100. You better be ready for a little short game action here. Well, it looks like they've gone with somebody else to bat at this time. We got a change here. He swings at the first pitch and fouls it straight back into the crowd. This is Drew Woodcox. Yeah. Junior. Kind of a utility guy, plays plays everywhere, right-handed hitter. So somebody different in there for Washburn, who walked and scored, but he, I, I believe Washburn was a lefty. And so with Simpson coming in, maybe they switch roles and they go with with Woodcox here in a pinch hit roll. Runners on second and third, 0-1 pitch from Simpson, high and outside. But just 231 on the season, so similar thing here. You're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna attack the strike zone, really get after him. Maybe try to keep the ball down. Hawks infield is back. They're going to go ahead and concede the first run here to try to get an out. Simpson has the strikeout stuff. 1-1 one, one pitch is outside. Struggling to find the zone a bit here. 2-1. and one. Jared hasn't had much adversity this year. Really going to have to kind of buckle in here, test the mental game. 2-1, breaking ball, called strike, brought it in that back door, right on the outside corner. It's 2-2, two and two. strikeout would go a long way for the Hawkeyes in the bottom of the third. Trailing Texas Tech 3-1. to one. It's been basically one swing of the bat for the Red Raiders to put them out in front, but helped them a bit to get there. Two yep. balls, two strikes, Simpsons pitch. Called third strike, got him at the knees. Down he goes, out number one. Yeah, the crowd's a little... Crowd's a little itchy, the, the batter doesn't like it, but boy, that just painted the bottom end of the strike zone and, and right on the inside portion of the plate. Big first out for the Hawks. Good job, Jared Simpson, to get that first out. Still two in scoring position, might have to do it again against Hudson White. He's the catcher, he singled and scored in the second. You might see him, tends to struggle with left-handed breaking balls here. You might see something just a little bit different than what than we just saw to get the last guy out. Of course, he busts his fastball right back in there. <laughs> yeah, goes with that heater inside, ball one. Uh, got that free base here open at first if you want to do anything with that, but on deck is Dylan Carter who hit the three-run homer to give the Red Raiders the lead. So he'd be playing with fire there to intentionally load him up. 1-0 pitch is hit in the air to center. Huxdorf. He's camped under it. Runner will tag. Huck makes the catch, throws it in. Runner tags and scores from third. It's four to one, but two down in the third. Another sack fly for Texas Tech. <laughs> they lead the country in that. 22nd sack fly of the season for uh, for the Red Raiders. So, so four to one in the bottom of the third. Hawks are down. 
And here's Dylan Carter. He hit that towering home run to left in the second. And the Tech Radio play-by-play -play guy was right on this one here last year. Last couple of years really hasn't been able to hit at all. 199 last season, all of a sudden 400 this year and um, you know, finding a little pop. And if Jared makes a mistake on the inner half of the plate, might see one driving out the other direction. Runner on second for Texas Tech, two down, bottom of the third. Red Raiders lead four to one. Simpson set, 1-0 pitch on its way home. That's high and in, I'd hit him. Hit him on the lead shoulder, and so two on and two out now for Texas Tech. It's the bottom of the order coming up now in, in Will Burns, and he struck out in the second. So not the worst thing as long as you get him out here. Yeah, this is a monster at bat right now. You, you cannot go to the top of the order with, with the bases loaded or down more. Right-handed hitter. First pitch from Simpson, swing and a miss. Good start. And this is the type of hitter that's going to struggle with Simpson's velocity. So if he can throw strikes, locate well, maybe get it up a belt high and, and up above those teaser ones that look good, and he can send him back to the bench. Turns away from this next pitch that's inside. Burns a bit frustrated with himself that he did turn away from it because if he, if he <laughs> takes it, it might hit him, and then it's top of the order coming to the plate. Runners on first and second for the Red Raiders. 1-1 one, one count with two outs. Pitch to Burns. Right down the middle, called strike. That's easy to say, but 92 mile an hour fastball off the knee does not sound like any part of fun to me. Yeah, yeah. He, he never brought that bat off the, off the shoulder. Al Simpson with a big pitch coming right here. Looks in for the sign. He's got it. 1-2. Feels it. Deals it. Called third strike. A bit of a late call, but Simpson froze him on the inside corner. And down he goes. All right, Hawks. Got a little work to do. We head to the fourth. Texas Tech four, Iowa one. We're back right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Ooh, got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Ah, oh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. You probably know that a natural gas leak smells like rotten eggs, but what does a gas leak look or sound like? If you hear a whooshing or hissing sound, see dirt, dust, or water spraying from an area, or you get dizzy or queasy, leave the area immediately, then call 1-800-595-5325 once you're safely away. See midamericanenergy.com for more safety tips. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Top of the fourth in Lubbock. Red Raiders lead four to one. Hawks have a little bit of work to do as we approach the middle inning. Seven, eight, nine to lead things off. Peterson, Moss, and Wilmus. The four to one score is uh, a little misleading or a little disappointing. You know, you, you're, you're playing a team that's ranked in five of the six baseball polls, and you know, you, you walk a runner in the second inning. He comes around on the opposite field home run. You walk a runner there, or a batter there, ball skips 15 feet away from Moss, he's able to take second, you have a throwing error, lets him take third, and a sack fly scores him. So Tech extends the lead by another run without, without even getting a hit. And so that's the, those are the freebies you can't give, um, you, you can't give in, in one of these, uh, in one of these, what you hope is an equal duel. Well, good start to the inning for Iowa as Peterson wears that one between the shoulder blades. And he's jogging down to first. And on the flip side of that, Iowa's done a good job against this Texas Tech pitcher, putting the ball in play, making the Red Raiders make plays. Unfortunately, Iowa's hit it like right two people. Well, and that's, you know, right now you've got you've to take advantage. Girton has not been able to consistently find the strike zone. You've got to either make him throw strikes, and then when he does, you have to try to punish him for it. I know it's easy to say, but it's important to do right now. Here's Moss, the Hawkeye catcher. First pitch strike to him. 
Iowa's been a, a somewhat aggressive on the base paths. Could have been more to this point. So we'll see if that's an emphasis as we get going. 0-1 pitch to Moss downstairs. 1-1. One one. We see some loosening in the Texas Tech bullpen behind the fence down in right. PD's one of those guys. Good speed. But I think Girton has really changed what he was doing. Um, you know, I think he's pretty much just done that glide step the whole time. Um, as, as the Hawks have had the speedier base runners on. 1-1 one, one on its way home is low, 2-1. and one. And Through the first couple innings, Hawks have had good plate discipline to this point, not chasing anything out of the zone, which we, we did see a little bit in South Al in, at the South Alabama Invitational, just going after pitches that weren't strikes. 2-1 is low and outside, 3-1. and one. Particularly the South Alabama game. And, right. And then Iowa did a much better job uh, against Pepperdine then on, on Sunday to close it out and then really did a good job against Coe um, on Tuesday to, to you know, know what their strike zone was. Curtin ready with the 3-1, and he misses low, ball four. And so again, the Hawks have an opportunity with the bottom portion of their order getting the first two on with the seven and eight guys uh, doing that hit by pitch and then a walk. Here's Ben Wilmus, first and second, nobody out. Hawks down by three, and the catcher will head out to the mound and here comes here comes Tim Tadlock the, the head coach for Texas Tech and, and this will be it for Girton he's going to the bullpen with the Hawks threatening in the top of the fourth we'll take a pitching change break it's Texas Tech four Iowa one in the top of the fourth but the Hawks they're in business we'll be back right after this pitching change break you're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield at Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. All right, new pitcher in for Texas Tech. Iowa trailing the Red Raiders 4-1 to one in the top of the fourth, but they've got the first two guys on to begin the fourth inning. Texas Tech going to the bullpen with Josh Sanders. Sanders' sixth appearance on the year, made five so far this season, a 368 ERA. He's thrown seven and a third innings, given up six hits, six runs. Just three of those were earned, though. Hasn't walked a batter. Struck out four. Opponents hitting just 207, but here's a crazy stat for you. He's allowed three home runs. Wow. On six hits. Well, we'll see if uh, we can give the ball a ride here in the fourth. Top of the order is looming. It'll be Ben Wilmus. He'll get the first look at him. Just as we watch uh, Sanders here, big, tall righty. And let's look at his delivery a bit, John. He, he turns away from the plate, that's a, it takes a long time for him to release it, right? So that could be something to keep an eye on as base runner. Yeah, first and second here, you've got some, you've got some relatively speedy base runners. Um, so you've got a chance there. Um, yeah, and he kind of he slings it a little bit. You know, he's not, he's not full sidearm, but maybe he's at that 10, 1030 spot. Uh, I'm still gonna bring it up in the low 90s. Um, Curveball, change up, slider. Got kind of the whole mix, but but to your point, a little slow to the plate. Last year in 18 appearances, a 7.20 ERA. Mm. Uh, obviously made some positive steps this year, but uh, hasn't thrown a ton of innings. You know, 25 innings last year in his 18 appearances. So, uh, from a Hawkeye perspective, you've kind of turned this now into a bullpen game for the Raiders, and now you have to take advantage of it. At this point, you'd really put Iowa's bullpen 
up against anybody's in, in the country. The Hawks with a team ERA of 2.71, which is 14th in the country, first in the in the Big Ten, due in large part by the bullpen that comes in. So if we want to make this a bullpen game, let's, let's have at it. Here's Ben Wilmis against Sanders. Corners are in. First pitch to Wilmis. Got his hands going. Called strike on the outside corner. It's 0-1. Good pitch there as he just busts in right away. 93-mile-an-hour fastball. Might have been a little low for Wilmus's taste, but it was a good pitch and coming right in there. Little surprise the Hawks didn't uh, didn't have any real action. Now the first baseman drops back. Third baseman still in shallow. No balls in the strike to Wilmus. Nobody out. And the Hawkeye fourth. Long pause, and he took too long. So ball more one. than 20 seconds. Yep, ball one. That's fine by us. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I do love that they have the clock up, though, because we otherwise this it. crowd might revolt. Yeah. One ball, one strike. Pitch on its way home to Wilmus. Just outside. Two and one. And boy, the crowd letting home plate umpire Casey Mosier know about it. Mosier's been pretty consistent. I think pretty good tonight. And <laughs> One call that the fans don't like, and they're letting him hear it. We actually do have track man tonight, so we can kind of see the zone and... and He's been very good and very consistent. 2-1 to Wilmus. Runners take off. Ben pulls back the bunt. The throw to third. Not in time. The double steal. It's on. And it works. And it was a ball. So it counts 3-1 now. Three balls and a strike to Wilmus. Good job by Ben. He had an outstanding at bat back in the second to draw the walk. Top of the order is on deck. And Michael Seegers, two in scoring position for Iowa. Nobody out. Sanders looks in for the sign. He's got it. 3-1 pitch to Wilmus. On the ground, right oh, back to the pitcher. And he's going to throw it home. We got it in a pickle. Peterson trying to get back to third. Now to the third baseman, throws it home. And Peterson is tagged out. That's so they just trade places because Peterson's out on his way home. And we've got runners on second and third now as Wilmus did a good job advancing to second. And Moss got to third. Uh, another one of those bad luck. I mean, he, you got exit velocity of 93 right back at the pitcher who did a great job. Um, just like when Petey got doubled off second, kind of had his head down, took off. The one saving grace then of the base running play was he stayed in the rundown long enough to allow Wilmus to get to second so that they could trade places. And the Hawks are still here in, in business here in the in the fourth inning. Iowa trailing by three. Opportunity to inch closer at Seegers. First pitch to Michael in the dirt. Ooh. And a good block by the catcher, White, who had to hop to his right and then kind of knock it down forward so that it didn't skip away from him. Those curveballs that are in the dirt, they kick up and away. That pitch wasn't even close. 69-mile-an-hour curveball that almost missed the left-handed batter's box. Great, great job of blocking that and keeping it right in front. Got to find a way to get a base hit here, Michael. 1-0 pitch. Called strike. Low and outside corner. One and one. That's a tough pitch to do anything with unless you have intentions of hitting it on the ground to the right side. Which Seegers does a lot. And Cade Moss had, <laughs> had just a wild secondary lead there. He was coming down the line. I, I'm not sure if maybe Michael missed a sign. Um, but Cade then slipped going back. They had a chance to throw behind him. 1-1 one, one on its way home to Seegers. This one's way outside. Backhanded by the catcher. 2-1. Michael handles the bat so well. You could see the Hawks doing a lot of different stuff here. But down three, um, you know, the, the, the squeeze or safety squeeze for a run might not be the way, but he could bunt for a hit here too. Next pitch to Seegers. Way inside, ball three. Okay, Huxdorf's on deck. Three balls and a strike with one out. Runners on second and third for Iowa. Top of the fourth, Hawks trailing four to one. Hunter, or Hudson White is getting his... His extra money's worth, whatever scholarship money, NIL he's got, that he's, he's earned it right here just even in this at bat. 3-1 to Seegers. Downstairs, ball four and a walk, and the bases are loaded for Huxdorf. Great at bat there from Michael, staying alive, keeping himself going. Huck's, wow. Huck's not a bad guy to have here. Yeah. He's got one of the uh, three Hawkeye Grand Slams on the season. Iowa deadly with the bases loaded. Today had a great opportunity in the second with those bases loaded, but made great contact, got doubled off the base paths. Another chance here for Iowa, top of the fourth. 
Four to one, Red Raiders with the lead. Bases loaded for Huckstore. First pitch to him. Low and outside, ball one. Hucks have really been, been the beneficiaries of, of, well, they've created their own luck. They've yep. done a really nice job taking these pitches. They aren't missing by a lot, but they aren't in the strike zone. One ball, no strikes to Kyle. Fouled it off in the box, and it's one and one. Just took a little bit off that one. Kyle was a little bit out in front of it. And mostly swung over the top of it, fouled it right into his body. You don't see Kyle take a light swing ever. Yeah, Kyle doesn't get cheated. <laughs> contact, no contact, it doesn't matter. Kyle does not get cheated. He lets it rip. One ball, one strike, one out. Bases loaded. Pitch to Huxdorf on the ground to the right side. First baseman's got it. Throws it to second. He dropped it. One run is in. Another one's going to score. And the Hawks are in business. Down by one after the error on the Texas Tech infield. That's what we'll take right there. I don't think that ball was going to be a double play ball with Huckstore's speed getting down the line anyway. First baseman kind of double clutched it a little bit. Um, and then the, by the time he threw almost a change up to the shortstop, I don't think there was going to be two there. But as it turns out, even better for the Hawks. As two runs come across, and now runner on third for Keaton Anthony with just one out. Iowa trailing 4-3 in the top of the fourth. Runner on first is Huckstorf. Runner on third is Seegers. And it's Anthony up now. They'll check on Huckstorf at first. And we mentioned that the fielding and the errors for Texas Tech defensively has been a prominent issue for them in the first handful of games. You also mentioned, too, Sanders is slow to the plate. Big yeah. chance here for Huckstorf to move into scoring position. First pitch to Anthony called strike. Down the middle, and it's 0-1. And we'll see if Huck gets going here. He j the pitcher just turns away from home plate, and then the slower delivery out of the arm, opportunity maybe to... And especially if you believe here, this might be off speed ahead 0-1. Now check on Kyle at first. Hawks have two outstanding base runners with Seegers at third and Huckstorf at first. A lot of speed. You can play a lot of games. Um, be a tough play for the Red Raiders to throw it through and try to get Huckstorf because um, Seegers could be jumping down the line on a double steal. No balls and a strike to Anthony. Hawks trail by one. Keaton fouls this to the right side, 0-2. Oh, Good challenge there by the pitcher. That was a nice pitch, 89 low and outside. Got Derigi on deck. Iowa trying to break through, could take the lead with an extra base hit. Tying run is at third in the top of the fourth. No balls, two strikes. Sanders looks in for the sign. He's got it from his catcher. Pitch to Anthony, swing and a miss. Didn't see that coming. Good ball. And again, spotted up really well, right on the low inside corner of the strike zone. Keaton really had to swing at it, but just an impossible pitch to handle. Good job uh, good job there with, with pitch location from Sanders. Yeah, great spot. Two down now for the Hawks in the fourth. Here's DeRiggy. Brennan has made great contact this evening. A couple of flyouts to the outfield, lined out to left his last time up on a rocket to Hester out there. Comes up with runners on the corners, two down. Iowa down by one. First pitch on its way home to DeRiggy. Downstairs, ball one. <laughs> I kind of joked about it, but I'm, Huckstorf might have broken himself on that, uh, that one where he had to jam on the brakes and come back. His, his secondary lead is, is really small and this is a great place for the Hawkeyes to play a game here with a double steal. White came out, flashed some signs. Brennan watches this one, called for a strike. But Huck's really not even getting off the base at yeah. all. There's, it's not even a good secondary jump as he's really trying to make sure of what he sees at this point. I think a hit and run opportunity could score him if we could find a gap. I'll check on him again with a throw over. I think we might be onto something here, John, because Kyle was leaning a bit, but he got back all right. One ball, one strike, two outs to DeRiggy. Runners on first and third. Iowa battling back down by one in the top of the fourth. Worst case is you have DeRiggy get an extra fastball here. There goes Huck. The pitch is low. Throw down to second is in time. They got him. Called him out. 
And Coach Heller's asking Kyle if he thought he was safe at second. Huxdorf seems like he's content with being called out or doesn't think it's worth a review. I don't, yeah, I don't know that that's the question that Coach Heller's asking, but. Uh, oh. no, no, it is, as they're going to review it. And too late. they've taken too much time, so they don't get the opportunity to review it. Let's make sure, as Coach Heller is now talking with home plate umpire Casey Mosier, we'll see if they give it to us. It wouldn't appear so. The Hawkeye defense is coming out to the field. Well, Iowa gets two runs in the fourth. It's Texas Tech four, Iowa three. We're back right after this. This is Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanye Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate, so there's more brain power focused on you. Because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at UIHC.org. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skogman Realty, the area's premier realtor. And Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Handling all of your exterior needs from roofing, siding, windows, and gutters, they've got you covered. Providing free damage inspections and help filing insurance claims. Call 319-343-6376. John Evans and John Leo in Lubbock, Texas. Bottom of the fourth inning, Iowa trailing four to three, inching closer. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Top of the order for Texas Tech in the fourth. It'll be Nolan Hester to lead things off against Jared Simpson out for another inning of work. Simpson was all right last inning, his first inning. Hester turns away from a pitch that was low. He had squared to bunt. 1-0. and yeah, Simpson walked a batter, hit a batter, but had a couple of strikeouts to limit the damage just one for Tech in the third. 1-0 pitch is downstairs 2-0. Well, we talk about this all the time also. You've got to now, you put up a crooked number. You answered Tex one in the bottom of that inning. You need to, you need to throw a zero here, and, and free bases have killed the Hawkeyes so far. So Jared needs to battle back here. 2-0 is high, 3-0. They showed a replay on ESPN Plus of Huxdorf trying to steal second. The ball clearly beat him there. Looked like it took a hop that the shortstop had to go get, but... Boy, I don't, I don't know that he would have gotten it overturned as he got the tag in kind of on his upper upper knee and shin. Four-pitch walk to begin the, the fourth. And that is the third straight inning that Texas Tech has started the the inning with a with a walk. So that's become a problem. The three or four. Well, we got Hester oh, out. To, we got Hester out to, to start the bottom of the first with the ground out to Seegers, right. but since then, it's been the walks. So here's Harrelson, first pitch from Simpson. He's missed on five in a row now. That pitch was right across the letters. So that's one of those upper strike zones that uh, that you just don't get called here in college. I think it's our turn for a double play, isn't it, John? I would think so. One ball, no strikes. Pitch from Simpson. There it is. Called strike on the outside corner. One and one. But yeah, if you're Tech at this point, you know, it's a little bit of what Iowa was doing to uh, to Girton. You go ahead and you make Simpson throw strikes. Make sure you see what, uh, what he's got before you freewheel the bats. This one's Ooh. fouled. Look out over there in the Iowa dugout. Ho! Looks like we're good over there. That got in. There's a small gap to get in there. And, boy, that one really zipped in right past pitching coach Sean McGrath, who stands on the outside of the, of the edge of the dugout there. I think we're all good. Nobody got hit in there. But, boy, that's sharp shot over there. One-two pitch from Simpson. 
And he just tried to guide that one, two and two. Totally different mechanics from Simpson right there. Just tried to get it in there, almost like he was throwing a dart. Well, and got, it up, and two. got it up and in, trying to protect his pitching coach a little bit. You can't blame him there, really. Sure. <laughs> Runner on first, nobody out. Bottom of the fourth, Simpson ready, 2-2. Two, two. On the ground to the left side, Seegers, he's got it. Throw to second for one. On to first is a bit late. They do get the lead runner there at second. Good job from Seegers there to make a good throw. Honar on the bag. Actually made it, turned it closer than I thought it was going to be, but, but still got down the line quickly enough that it wasn't really a close play. That is a really impressive play by Seegers. He had a long way to run, and then to just kind of be able to square his hips and get that throw over to, to second accurately to get that out. Good job there, Seegers, the, the fine shortstop in the black and gold. Here's Bazell. He's one for two today. Runner on first. First pitch from Simpson. Called strike on the inside corner. Way to attack the zone there from Jared. He's had trouble with strike one, so good to see him get ahead here. Harrelson spent a lot of time on first base, but Simpson with a good move shouldn't get too far off. We'll throw it over to first just to keep Harrelson close. He is one for two in stolen base attempts this year. Batter is Bazell. Pitch from Simpson is just outside, maybe a bit high too. Ball one. Well, you've been getting the ground balls lately, but just hit in tougher spots, right, to be able to, to twist it in the middle. They rolled a couple through. Yeah. Swing and a miss and a nice pitch from Simpson one and two now. Rolled a couple of those ground balls through the infield early in the game. The Hawks are now able to get to them, but they're still not really, still not really balls. They're going to turn double plays. We'll take a strikeout, ground ball, any way to get Bazell out. One, two on the ground and just foul. Pass Derigi at first. That one was close. That's one of those where you'd like Derigi to be just a step slower coming off the base, holding the runner. He makes that catch, steps on the bag, and innings over. We're going to hit. But instead, foul. One ball, two strikes. One down in the Red Raider fourth. Texas Tech leading by one. This has been a great contest so far. Simpsons 1-2. Tap foul to the Iowa dugout down the third baseline. We'll do it again. Safer play for the Iowa dugout that time. <laughs> Yeah, that's a high chopper. You got plenty of time to react to it. Peter Simpson, maybe go for that slider that you can bury in. One two pitch. Fouled back again. Good call there. I think he was trying to dive on a on a back foot slider, a little curveball. Just kind of stayed up in the zone instead. We've had a couple of these tonight where it's just been a good duel between the pitcher and and the hitter. Texas Tech's won a couple. Hawks have won a couple. Another one here. One ball, two strikes. Simpson out of the stretch. And they'll check on the runner at first. Whoa, high throw. Look out. Derigi jumps to grab it. Yeah, the Hawkeye changeups to first base haven't worked out very well. You saw Obermil Obermuller throw one into the throw one into the ground on Tuesday. It cost the Hawkeyes a run. Big lead at first for Harrelson. He's taken off. One, two's outside. The throw down is late. A bit low, too, and Honar blocked it. Count is two balls, two strikes to the Red Raider three hitter. That's a good, a good read and a good steal. He kind of, he just, he, you hit it on the head. He got a big lead and was all ready to go. And, and pretty much then on Simpson's first move after the pickoff move, he was gone. Well, the ground ball for the double play is out of the picture now. Go for the strikeout, Jared. 2-2 two -two pitch. Fouled up over our heads and out of play. We'll do it again. I needed a net to make that play. Yeah. And a good vertical. I'm, I'm not jumping on that off this edge. <laughs> See if Jared can miss the barrel this time. Two balls, two strikes. Pitch from Simpson on the ground, foul to the left side. Goes after his third base coach now. 
What a battle we've got between Bazell and Simpson. Count is two and two, but been about eight pitches in this at bat. Eleventh pitch of the eleventh pitch of the at bat on its way from Simpson to Bazell. Tap to the left side and foul. Tello picks it up and throws it over to first, but it was just foul. And so it'll be the twelfth pitch of the at bat coming now. <laughs> Boy, feels like a momentous moment here. Runner in scoring position at second, one out for the Red Raiders. Yeah, this has just turned into a uh, uh, an awfully good chess match, and see if Jared can fool him with uh, with a pitch. Because right now Bazell's been at least on enough to get a contact. Good lead at second for Harrelson. He's dancing around out there. This pitch is low. Ball three. Hey, uh, challenger threat right here, right, John? That's something that we've heard from coach McGrath the pitching coach we viewing this as a challenge to go get this hitter or a, a threat Simpson is ready for the challenge three balls and two strikes here it comes shot into right field and fouling out of play quite the at bat we've got going right here yeah, Simpson hasn't been Simpson hasn't had many guys see the ball this well We'll do it again with a full count pitch. It's on its way home. Line drive, base hit in the right. Wilmis will pick it up. He'll throw it in. It's cut off by Derigi. Runner holds at third. So after all that, a shot single to right. Runners on the corners for Tech. That was just uh, that was just professional hitting there from Bazell. That's a that's a guy that's going to spend some time. Swinging the bat for money with with the way he just works Simpson there and and Jared didn't do anything wrong. Great just, job. Bazell just happened to happened to beat him that time and and good piece of hitting there. Went the opposite way with that one. Didn't try to do too much with it and and sent it screaming through the right side for a hit. It's Austin Green now. He's 0 for 1. He did walk his last time up in the third. Runner on first. Runner on third. First pitch from Simpson in there for a strike. 0 and 1. Yes, green 364 on the season. Couple home runs, seven extra base hits, but see if Jared can come back now. Yeah, he's really pounding the low part of the zone. It's 0 and 2. Well, he pounded the strike zone against Bazell too, true. so it wasn't it wasn't like Jared's been wild. It's just uh, just wasn't able to get the out last at bat. Jared's actually really settled in now. Uh, we had a little bit of a rocky start to his outing in the third. He's done a nice job since then. 0-2 pitch. This is low, blocked by Moss. One ball, two strikes. Bazell has no intention of stealing and heading to second, so really use one of those ground balls if, if Simpson can't get a strikeout on his own accord. One ball, two strikes with one out. Bottom of the fourth, Tech leading 4-3. Pitch from Simpson. Tapped right back to Simpson. His only play is the first. And he throws it to DeRiggy for the second out. It was a high chopper, and it scored the run. Bad break there for the Hawks. is uh, a really good pitch from Simpson. Um, just basically beat it off the plate. And uh, Simpson's only play, and actually it was a good play because the left-hander's got to pivot and turn all the way around to get that ball to first. Uh, throw was low, but DeRiggy picked it. Two down in the bottom of the fourth. It's 5-3 now, Texas Tech as Hester scores and and John that was the leadoff walk that we gave up and, and he's the guy that ends up scoring runner on second this pitch is way high Moss will try to throw behind a second he is safe this pitch was high and tight on cash Moss grabbed it threw it behind the runner at second Seegers was there but so was the runner Try to get out of this inning. Texas Tech has scored in each of the last three. This is a line drive base hit in the right center. It'll score another run. It'll be six to three. Cash rounds first hard. 
And he'll head back to first now. A two out RBI single. Mm. Good piece of hitting right there. Really barreled that one up. Yeah, the tech hitters, I mean, you, you, you weren't going to hold them hitless. And so, again, it kind of goes back to what, what, are you, what do you help them with? Uh, but, you know, Bazell was outstanding. And then um, good piece of hitting there from, from the guy that leads them in average for the season. This has popped up foul to the right side, out of play. Good start for Simpson to get ahead of Woodcox, who struck out back in the third. It's six to three now, Texas Tech with the lead. Bottom of the fourth inning, two down. And the scouting report on him was Hawks wanted to challenge him with just a mix. You know, it wasn't any one pitch particularly, but didn't want to shy away from him. This one is outside, close, but one ball, one strike. Small lead at first for Cash. This is hit on the left side, another base hit. In between Seegers and a diving Raider Tello. And now quite a few hits in a row for Texas Tech. Another ground ball single though, just. Uh... <laughs> they haven't had the greatest contact aside from the, the home run and maybe one of the shots to right, but like you said, the ground balls that are just finding their way through. Just kind of missing the Hawkeye defenders. They're not, uh, I mean, they're, they're sharply hit enough, and, and obviously this is a fast turf infield, um, but just, uh, just a little unfortunate that you're kind of getting the pitches you want, just not able to, to, uh, to get the finish. Well, it's been a game of, of trading blows, right? Iowa scored one run in the second, but gave up three in the bottom half of the inning. Red Raiders added to their lead, made it four to one as we got to the fourth, but the Hawks punched back, and now Texas Tech extending their lead 6-3. Runners on first and second, two outs. Simpson's first pitch is high and outside to Hudson White. This felt like a game the Hawks might have to win 10-8, to eight, but I was hoping that wasn't the case. Yeah. Now we, when we talked with Texas Tech, with their play-by-play -play guy before the game, he thought that uh, it could be high scoring, but he'd have to take a look at what, what Iowa was bringing. The, the way I see it, the way this ballpark plays, probably going to be high scoring, even though we've got really good pitchers on both sides all the way through. Two balls, no strikes to White. Two on for Tech. This pitch is fouled into the screen, two and one. Aggressive hack there ahead in the count, 2-0. And Tech has swung at a handful of 2-0 of pitches. Unfortunately, the Hawks have been in a 2-0 position a handful of times, but um, not sure Tech's hurt them really bad with those swings yet. Simpson trying to work back into this count. Two balls and a strike. Long pause on the mound. Now he's ready in the pitch. Popped up shallow right. Wilmus has a long way to go. Dorigi's going back towards the line and the wall. And we make the play there. We have no visual of it. Looks like Dorigi caught it for the third out of the inning. All right. Totally out of view, but Brennan Dorigi tracks it down and makes the catch for the third out of the inning. All right, we've played four in Lubbock. Texas Tech leading this one six to three. Hawks have to battle when we get to the fifth. We're back right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Ooh, got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Ah, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg, and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores, where right now, kids can eat free.
John Evans and John Leo in the broadcast booth. Dan Law Field, Rip Griffin Park in Lubbock, Texas. Gorgeous facility. Iowa on the road for three against the Red Raiders. We're about halfway through this one. Iowa down six to three. Have to find a way to answer back the two runs that we just gave up in the in the fourth. It'll be a new pitcher for Texas Tech. They're going to switch things up and go with a lefty this time. And they'll go with Ryan Free. Three and four appearances this year, a 540 ERA in six and two thirds innings. You know, again, he's got kind of that traditional 90 mile an hour fastball. And, and then as any good left hander, he's got some good spin and that's going to come in around 80. Last year, 409 ERA in 11 appearances. Threw a lot more innings last year, 50 and two thirds innings in his 11 appearances. So, um, might have a little bit of uh, might have a little bit of stamina. The Hawks will have to continue the patient, good at bats, and see if they can uh, get something started. And he is around the strike zone. Ten strikeouts, three walks. Opponents are hitting 192 against him. So to the top of the fifth we go. Hawks are down 6-3. Derigi will lead things off. He was in the box when. Huxdorf was caught stealing to end the last inning. First pitch is a called strike on the outside corner. Left-hander free comes set. A one pitch to the lefty hitter. Check swing, didn't go around one and one. Good hold there from Derigi. Started going, the breaking ball fell off the table and wasn't a strike. Try to get things started a little bit earlier than with two outs, right? Derigi shoots this one to second off the glove and into right field. Brennan's going to round first hard. He's got a shot at two, and then he slams on the brakes, and he'll go back to first. Probably a safe, smart move there, considering the Hawks are down three. Yeah, his his run doesn't necessarily mean anything right there. Good job. Generous hometown scorekeeper gives that a hit. Crushed that ball. I mean, he hit that hard. Exit below on that had to be north of 100 again. 107. Yeah, he's he's really seen the strike zone, um, or he's just seen the ball come into the strike zone and just sent it screaming the other direction. It's Tello now in the Hawkeye fifth. Keep chipping away at Texas Tech. Red Raiders are up six to three. They've doubled up the Hawkeyes in runs and hits. Eight hits for Texas Tech, four for Iowa. Tello watches a sweeping curve break in the back door. One ball, one strike. Yeah, outstanding breaking ball there. Tello's not going to be able to do much with, with that, so be about driving something a little bit better. Like that one into the gap in left center, but the left fielder is there and he's got it for out number one. Sounded like he just capped that off the end of the bat just a little bit and kind of came off and hooked right toward the left fielder. <laughs> one down in the Hawkeye fifth. We're just sharing a chuckle about that based on our conversation we had with Radar on the bus last night after after practice. Yeah, I don't think that was the call he was hoping for. Not that one. Here's Honar, first pitch to him. He pops it up left side, foul, and out of play over towards the practice facility. When that day comes when Raider does hit a home run, we'll have something loaded up for him. We're going we're gonna to learn. He wants, a, he wants a signature home run call. We're going to learn something fun for him for yeah. sure. <laughs> no balls and a strike to Honar. Swing off the handle and fouled it back. 0 and 2. Really good fastball there. Been impressed with Free so far. He's in and around the zone and challenging the Iowa hitters. Comes set decent lead at first for Derigi. Long pause, and now the 0-2. Swing and a miss. Fooled him there. Got him to chase one out of the zone. And two down. Yeah, that one was just a bit outside, wasn't it? And 
Sam missed it. So now we'll go with Peterson. Peterson's been on both times today. Singled in the first, hit by a pitch in the fourth. I see some power. Somebody maybe get a hold of one here to get us even closer. Texas Tech six, Iowa three, top of the fifth. Two down, Derigi on first. First pitch to Peterson, backdoor breaking ball called strike. Another really good pitch, and that's, you know, now working ahead in the count. Good gap in left center and especially down the left field line. This is fouled by Peterson, 0-2, but uh, with, a, with a pull situation, uh, re really going to be hard for Peterson to get around on one, right, with the, the speed that this, the velocity that this pitcher is, is bringing in the 90s. Uh, if he's going to pull one, it have to be off speed. There's just a lot of room down that left field line, John. That's where I'm looking. I like what you're thinking, and, and Petey's got a good quick bat. You know, it's really about, it's going to be about location. If, if he tries to bust him in and, and Petey can get the barrel around on it, then he can pull it right down that line, fastball or breaking ball. No balls, two strikes to Peterson. Derigi takes off for second. This pitch is high and outside. Throw down is not in time and juggled a bit by the second baseman. And so Derigi with two strikes and two outs, he gets up to second base. It's Ricky's third stolen base on the year. Probably not a guy you think of as a stolen base threat, but yet done a really nice job. Now the Hawks have a runner in scoring position and, and a chance here for Petey. We've joked about that before, that it's almost the element of surprise that DeRiggy gets there, but fleet of foot to get to second this time. One ball, two strikes, pitch to Peterson. Oh. Swing and a miss. Went fishing for one that never had a chance, and Peterson is down on strikes for the third out of the inning. So the Hawks can't inch closer to the bottom of the fifth we go. Texas Tech six, Iowa three. We're back right after this. It's Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skoglin Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. The Hotel Kirkwood, named the Corridor Business Journal's 2022 Best Banquet and Event Venue, and awarded the AAA Four Diamond Award for Lodging. To make reservations, visit the Hotel at Kirkwood.com or call 877-751-5111 for more information. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash findus. Bottom of the fifth inning from Lubbock. Game one of the series, Iowa and Texas Tech. Game two is tomorrow at 2 p.m. Game three is Sunday at 1. Big time series for the Hawks to uh, prove that they're, they're for real early on. When corn grows fuel, Iowans win. Ethanol is a renewable fuel that's better for our environment, our health, and our wallets. Share your winning moments using hashtag Iowans win, and you could win even more from Iowa corn. Well, John, just take a moment as we are, you know, about halfway through this one. What have you seen so far uh, from Iowa? Trailing six to three. Uh, something we haven't really seen all year. The... Um, Hawkeye pitchers haven't been able to particularly miss bats. And, you know, the Red Raiders done a nice job putting the ball in play. Um, haven't hit a ton hard, but hit them in good spots, rolled them through, uh, rolled them through the infield, and then taken advantage and, and really done some damage when, uh, when the opportunity presented itself. Texas Tech will lead things off with Dylan Carter in the fifth. He's been a thorn on the Hawkeye's side. Simpson can't find the strike zone in the first two pitches. And you mentioned it. You mentioned it uh, last inning. The Hawks have walked the leadoff hitter three times. Hawks have given up six runs in those three innings. As they've, the only inning they've got out of was the first. Carter squares the bunt, pulls it Ooh. back, and then the pitch is inside. So 3-0.
Robinson's got some work to do. 3-0 pitch is outside ball four. Four innings in a row, Iowa has walked the leadoff man. Yeah, that and, just... And, and Tech has scored the first, the, you know, the, the three previous innings, they, they've scored off of that. We were talking during the break. Uh, Iowa pitching hasn't had the cleanest of innings yet. We, they've... Texas Tech has sent at least five batters to the box in each of these first four plus innings now. It's Will Burns in there, right handed shortstop. He struck out twice today. We've done a good job of getting him out. Simpson starts ahead 0 1. Tech's just not a team hitting wise you need to help, and the, the free bases are, are just killing Iowa right now. Runner takes off for second, pitches inside, throw down is in time. We got him. Yes. Headphones. And they are going to <laughs> review it if they have the capability. Oh, they do. And the umpires are coming together in front of the pitcher's mound. Great throw by Moss to get him. Gets to the outside of the bag. Ball beats him there. Foot comes up. He's going to be called safe. Think so? Yes. Well, the, the umpires will review this one and feels like a, a swing part of the game to wipe that runner off the base pass would be huge oh absolutely 100 percent agree with you but just glancing at the replay honar's in front of the bag foot gets in foot gets in before so as much as i'd love to to play homer here and uh and call him out i think uh i think they're going to be jogging him back out to second base but in the meantime, Hawk fans, experience your home away from home at Coralville's finest all-suite hotels. Homewood Suites and Home to Suites by Hilton each offer guests spacious suites, complimentary breakfast, 24-hour fitness center, pool, hot tub, guest laundry, and convenient locations. Let their warm and friendly staff take care of you and your family when you visit Hawkeye Country. Simpson's getting some warm-up pitches. In the meantime, long review. I guess I'm happier that it's taking them this long because maybe they maybe they don't see it. The, we've got a TV here in the in the booth that's got the ESPN Plus call on it, and uh, I think I would have overturned it by now. So I'm terrible at this in volleyball. I think we've <laughs> talked about it before. I really would enjoy being wrong. We don't really have a visual of the umpires because they're in the first base dugout, which is below us. where we'll see them poke out from where they're at. And it appears they've called him safe as the crowd reacts accordingly. So Carter will head back to second. He is safe after the overturned call. Love what, uh, love what the hitter Burns did there. He was trying to confuse the umpire about, hey, that was a ball, right? Yeah, no, he's down on the count 0-2. Pitch from Simpson, got a piece of it and fouled it back. It was right on that one too, sent it right back to the screen. Simpson with a bit more work to do. Strikeout would go a long way in, in helping things out in the bottom of the fifth. Iowa trailing 6-3. Pitch from Simpson. Outside, didn't go after it, one and two. Kind of a show pitch there for Jared. Show him just a good fastball outside. See if you can maybe disrupt the timing now with this pitch. This is laced into left center field. This one is trouble. It's down in the gap, and it one hops off the wall. One run is in, and a two-strike double to the deepest part of the park out there in left center extends Texas Tech's lead to 7-3. to three. Two strike double from a guy hitting 115 on the season and, and less than that after going 0 for 2 today. So, um, and again, that's the, the, the four pitch walk scores. So that's just a tough series right now for the Hawkeyes on, on not being able to, to take care of that first batter and, and Tech not doing anything um, other than taking four pitches. And nobody out and a runner on second. This pitch is high and tight. 
and Hester has to dive out of the way, and now he's all flustered, takes his batting helmet off and shakes his hair around a little bit. Now he's ready to hit again. One ball, no strikes. Pitch to Hester is skipped in front of the plate, gets away from the catcher. Moss can't locate it. Runner goes to third. And that's a difference in when Huxdorf was on first, catcher couldn't locate it. He stayed on first. And that one, Texas Tech runner sees Moss's confusion on the ball that Simpson spiked in front of the plate and went ahead and took third, even though it's a short throw if, if Moss could find it. The infield comes in for Iowa now. Two balls, no strikes. Pitch from Simpson, line drive, base hit. In the center. That'll score a run, it's eight to three. Texas Tech extending their lead. They scored three in the second, one in the third, and they've got two each in the fourth and now the fifth. Yeah, and turn, turn that one around, just a, a sharp line drive and that'll bring Coach Heller and that'll probably be the end of, of uh, Jared Simpson today. Yeah, Coach Heller comes out of the Iowa dugout and he makes the call to the bullpen. We'll see who it is for the Hawks coming up after this pitching change break. Texas Tech up by five. It's eight to three in the bottom of the fifth. You're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores where right now, kids can eat free. At MidAmerican Energy, we want to help keep you safe around power lines and electrical equipment. Always assume a power line is energized, even if it's on the ground. To avoid the risk of an accidental shock or electrocution, avoid touching a power line with anything. And when you see high voltage warnings on transformers and substations, stay away. We care about you and your safety. Get more tips at midamericanenergy.com. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Call to the bullpen in the bottom of the fifth inning. Iowa trailing 8-3. The Red Raiders putting a few things together. The Hawks will go with Jack Whitlock. He's into the game for the black and gold. First weekend appearance for Jack. Jack's 2-0 on the season. Made a couple of appearances. Got a start in a midweek game. Two innings, two strikeouts. Serious upgrade in competition now for Jack, though. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Texas Tech's done basically everything right offensively today they've gotten on base whether that was earned or not but you know to be fair w when you get walked you know you kind of earn that though uh, because you're not chasing pitches out of the zone so it's a little bit of both but Hawks haven't thrown enough strikes yet well and even with that you know even if you if you walk a guy here or walk a guy there the other team still has to punish you for it and and the Red Raiders are right now they're hitting 455 they've got 10 hits and 22 at bats um, 471 with runners on base and 417 and runners in score with runners in scoring position. So uh, they've done everything they were supposed to do uh, as a as a hitting unit. And yeah, you know, this is the first time this is the first time Iowa's really had to deviate kind of from their core six starters. I I think Nick Gotilla got a little run um, against Sam Houston, but otherwise. Uh, the six guys they consider starters have pretty much split split the games and uh, first time they got knocked around a little bit game's not over so you've got a chance to respond um, but it's going to take you with nobody out here you're going to have to get out you're going to have to get out kind of through the meat of the order and then you're going to have to go not press at the plate and see if you can uh, see if you can scramble up some runs Whitlock, a sophomore righty, 6'2", 205. Hails from the state of Georgia. Harrelson is the batter. Whitlock misses high and outside, ball one. You know, we've, we've said before, 
you know, hitting is contagious, even in other sports. You know, basketball, when the three ball's going in, that can be contagious. I think the same can be said for pitching. 1-0 pitch from Whitlock gets by Moss. Runner advances from first to second. And what I mean by that is that the ability to throw balls and strikes. And uh, Ty started the day for Iowa. Uh, threw quite a few strikes, but missed the zone a bit. Jared Simpson came in, was missing the zone. And, and, and Jack is 2-0 on Harrelson here. Just need somebody to find the strike zone, turn things around. Down 8-3. This pitch is high and outside ball three. Yeah. It just feels like that part can be contagious, too. Hawks have walked four hitters, to your point. Hit another one. Third wild pitch there on the game from Whitlock. Um, first from Whitlock. Third on the game right. for the team. Um, so, yeah, just a little, bit of, uh, a little bit of all over right now. There, Whitlock finds it on the inside corner, three and one. You know, Texas Tech's done it with eight singles and two extra base hits. So, I mean, they've, they've just kind of haven't particularly hammered the Hawkeye pitchers, but uh, have found spots and, and done it when they needed to. And now you got a world of a bind here with two on, nobody out, and the, the meat of the order coming up for Texas Tech. Two walks in the inning for Texas Tech. They got one right there from Harrelson. Hawks have not had a clean inning defensively. The, the cleanest one was in the first. And Tech has scored in every inning since then. It's 8-3, to three, and this pitch is inside. Bazell's trying to bunt, and a breaking ball that was started inside, stayed inside, almost hit him. And we'll have a brief pause as Cade Moss will head out to the, the pitcher's mound. No chance Bazell's going to bunt. Bazell, yeah, I'm surprised by that, too. Bazell is showing bunt because... Right now, Jack's having a hard time finding the strike zone, so he's just he's creating some some extra motion to, to continue to, to distract Jack a little bit. Um, almost caught it in the chest, sure. so we'll, <laughs> we'll see if he squares the take again. Um, but yeah, Hawks just 56% strikes, but funny enough, Texas Tech's just thrown 49.5% of their pitches for strikes, less than 50% for strikes, but really been able to, to take advantage of their opportunities. Whitlock's 1-0. Swing and a miss. Nice throw there from Whitlock. 78 mile an hour breaking balls. Talk about catching him off guard. Yeah, that, that had a good amount of dip to it on the way in as well as Bazell swung over the top of it. One ball, one strike. Here it is. On the ground to short and past it. Reaching Seegers. Rounding third, heading for home is the runner. The throw in. He is safe. Close play, but safe. And we'll ask for a challenge here. Great throw from Peterson on a hop. Moss grabbed it, went to apply the tag. It's going to be close, but he's called safe at the plate. As it stands, it would be 9-3. to three. Yeah, I, I think that's more of a, of a grasping play right now by the Hawkeye coaches. I don't think, uh, at least at our view of it, it looked like he was safe. Really good throw there from Petey. Tello let it go through. Ball was just slightly up the line. Unless that left foot misses the plate, um, but if he, if he catches the plate at all, I think it's a pretty much done deal. And we're watching the replay. It bounced over, but I think he's going to be called safe. We'll see what they come up with. If it stands, it'll be 9-3. to three. It's been a tough go for Iowa this evening. Plenty of outs to work with. We're only in the bottom of the fifth. And that run... That runner, one way or the other, is going to go to Simpson. So if, it's, uh, if the run scores, that'll be the, the sixth earned run allowed on the night by Jared. And I'm afraid that's the way it's going to be. Yeah. Well, taking quite the time to figure it out. Not really sure how far up the tunnel they have to go. If there's something right there, since it's down out of our view. Yeah, we, we're not able to see it. Boy, it'd be a heck of a comeback for the Hawks to, to get this one. Trailing by five, maybe six, pending the, the result of the review here. We'll, right. be, we'll be back tomorrow, 2 o'clock. We'll see Brody Brecht for the Hawks. Texas Tech throwing a pretty good left-hander as well. So the pitching matchup is... 
great tomorrow. The weather will be interesting. It'll be in the 80s and, and very windy again heavy, tomorrow. Heavy, heavy wind on the forecast. So that'll be, uh, well, I, don't, I don't didn't see a forecast to know what direction it's supposed to blow. That could be a heck of a heck of an entertaining the, the fellow I was talking to before the game uh, in the lounge over here was talking about we're going to get introduced to the good old West Texas winds tomorrow. Well, two weeks ago they had a dust storm down here, right? You got what do you find? And I'm looking at 25 to 35 with the occasional gust over 50. 50? Whoa. Over 50. That's All right. The officials, are, the umpires have come out. He's safe at home. So count the run. It's nine to three. I hate being two for two on these when they're both going against the Hawkeyes. Yeah. Well, Bazell singles in a run. Coach Heller talked in the pregame interview with you. One of the things he liked about the team was was kind of the toughness, the grittiness. This is it right here. Yep. You know, how do you how do you buck up here? Um, how do you respond tonight? How do you respond tomorrow? Good pitch there from Jack. Yeah, swing and a miss by Austin Green, who's up. Fridays have been the, the tough game for Iowa the, the entire season. So maybe it's just about settling in while, while on the road. This is the last uh, road you know, weekend. Uh, in the month to start the season. We'll start playing at home a little bit more beginning next week. And it's definitely different. You know, it, it's, uh, you know, four weeks in a row now. Uh, this week travel was, was a little bit easier, but. 1-1 um, one, one pitch, swing and a miss. Whitlock goes back to the off speed. You know, you're tired of traveling. You're tired of looking at each other. I mean, I know these guys are teammates. I know they're around each other a lot, but um, it's one thing to, to have your own space to be able to go somewhere else, get your own quiet time as opposed to being shacked up in a hotel room. Right. One, two is hit over by the foul pole, the, the light over there. And so, you know, it'll just be, it'll just be good to kind of get back, uh, to get back. But again, we've still got two and a half games here. So let's not, let's not rush to get back. We've got uh, a couple games to win here before we, before we head back to Iowa City. One, two from Whitlock. High and outside. Ball two. A couple of arms getting loose in the Iowa pen down there. I believe Jacob Henderson is one of them. See a lefty as well. I believe Gatilla. That would be Nick. Two balls, two strikes. Nobody out. Here's the pitch from Whitlock. Outside ball three. Yeah, Jack did a good job getting ahead. Um, but, now, you know, he... He kind of missed wide, not particularly close. Tried to nibble there and, and missed, so really needs to battle back here. Three balls, two strikes, nobody out. The pitch way high and outside, ball four. Bases are loaded for the Red Raiders with nobody out in the bottom of the fifth. They're up nine to three on the Hawks. Red Raiders had, I think it was 100 and pull it up, so I'm listed up correctly coming into the game had been issued 107 walks and it struck out 105 times so they they are a fairly free swinging team until they're not and then you know that they, they're they have good enough discipline that that when you start missing the zone um, they're going to make you come back to it and unfortunately uh, the Hawks had struggled with that a little bit and then uh, when they've come back to the zone Texas Tech has punished them for it it's Gavin Cash in there now. Whitlock has done a nice job to get on him 0-2 after Cash has been, as John just mentioned, you know, kind of free swinging here. Swung at the first pitch, swung at the second one, fouled the first one off, missed that last one. No balls, two strikes. Whitlock ready. Bases loaded, nobody out. Cash just throws his hands at this one, hit over to the left side. Tello giving chase, but it's going to get into the stands occupied by Red Raider fans over there to the left. Yeah, cash hitting 458 on the year. You, you know you're you know you're good when one for three lowers your batting average. <laughs> That's like something that would happen to Keaton Anthony, right? Exactly. <laughs> Whitlock in a good spot here. 0-2 pitch popped up again. Foul out of play to the left side. Much better hack there from Cash on that one. He saw that one a little bit better and sent it uh, same general direction.
Nobody out here. Hawks roll two. Maybe just save some. This one's driven into right. Deep and high. Wilmus near the line. Looks up into the night sky. He's got it. Runners will tag from second and third. The run will score from third. 10 to 3, Texas Tech on another sack fly. Actually, a really good throw from Wilmus. I didn't think he had any chance of getting the runner. And uh, pretty good throw there. Derigi let it go. Cade did a good job of blocking it to not cause any other problems. But another run crosses and, and another sacrifice fly for Texas Tech. Red Raiders up 10 to 3. And it's Woodcox again. He's. Runners on the corners with one out. First pitch from Whitlock. High and outside, ball one. You know, it's going to be interesting how Iowa responds both in this game yet. You know, uh, the deficit is seven. Uh, but the thing with baseball, this pitch is swung on and fouled back to the padding. The thing with baseball we say it all the time. You know, there's no clock. There is a pitch clock. Yes, there is no clock. There, the, the game will not expire uh, in, in, until the outs are recorded. So Iowa can make anything happen. It's just the, the deficit is a little bit large right now as this one's hit to Honar at second. He's gloved it for out number two. Didn't have a play to double up anybody there. So Woodcox is out on a soft liner to second. Yeah, hit a little bit of a, again, a kind of a cap knuckleball, but um, sticking to your point, the Hawks have 12 outs. You have 12 outs against a team that's thrown more balls than strikes tonight. Yeah. So uh, there, there's still an opportunity there. Uh, you saw Peterson expand the strike zone a little bit in the, in the top of the inning. Um, so, you know, you still have to maintain that same good plate discipline. Do exactly what you were doing early in the game. Um, even though you're behind now, nobody hits the seven-run home run. Right. So you just need a series of base runners to come back and, and you get the series of base runners because you take good at bats. You do what you can do and you don't try to press and you don't try to, oh, I'm going to hit a home run. I, give me a single. Give me a walk. Give me a hit by a pitch. Give me anything to put you on base. Count is one and one to Hudson White. Two down, runners on the corners. And, and part of that is the, the message we heard today in the scout. You know, do your one ninth, right? What, what can I do to help the team win? Uh, and that's just each individual, hey, single, single. This is on the ground to third. Tello moves forward, bobbled it, has time, throw to first, got him, yeah! Great recovery by Tello, he's still competing, and he makes a great play on the recovery to throw it over to first. They say they wanna, they're gonna review it and bring the Hawkeyes out of the dugout, back onto the field. I thought he got him, John. Live, I thought he got him. We'll see. We'll catch the replay here. Tello tried to catch the short hop, missed it, but did a good job. Chased up the bare hand. They didn't snap it over. To first. This will be a better view on the on the replay to see it, but as we know, the Hawks are 0 for 2 on these right now. Snaps it over. He's safe. But really? Well, That will bring in a run. I think Derigi knows it as he sits there too, because the first baseman is going to be able to hear kind of both. Both, he's going to be able to feel the pressure on the bag, know when it hit his glove. I'm going to go three for three on this, and all three, all three reviews are going to go tax way. And they should. I hope you're right about a lot of things, John. I hope you're wrong <laughs> about this one. <laughs> but uh, the, the Hawkeye defense back out on the field, and Whitlock still throwing some warm-up pitches, so. Looks like Iowa might be on the same page. Uh, that would have brought in a run. You're right. So it, it would be 11 to 3 if he's called safe. And it'll be interesting to see what the official score is there. Um, it's probably, probably an error. Um, it is. And they come out and call them safe. So. Go E5 on Tello there. Tough play. Almost made it on the recovery. Second error of the game for the Hawks. Five runs now have come across in the Red Raider fifth. It's 11 to 3. And Texas Tech is batted around now. That was Back the, to Carter. 11 to 3 was the final score in Iowa City in one of the games last year. 
And Coach Heller will come out of the dugout and peer down to the bullpen in left. And a pitching change is coming. We'll take a pitching change break. Bottom of the fifth, Texas Tech 11, Iowa 3. Back right after this pitching change break, you're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! We all love a good win, catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. All right, bottom of the fifth inning, Texas Tech 11, Iowa 3, two down in the inning. Hawks go to the bullpen. We'll see Nick Gatilla coming out of the Hawkeye bullpen. He's got to, got to hold him here and probably asking Nick to go a few innings, and, and that's been tough for Hawkeye pitchers today. Correct, and a lot of that's been a uh, uh, hard time throwing strikes consistently, and, and then uh, that, that's really the first error that, that – uh, will, will cause an extra hitter, so to speak. But fifth appearance for Nick. He's been uh, three and a third innings. He's yet to allow a hit. Walked three, struck out five. Um, so, again, you kind of look for Nick to get out of this inning and uh, hopefully get him through a couple more and, and not use up uh, not use up everybody because college bullpens are a little bit different. You know, they don't uh, they don't traditionally throw. Uh, all three nights of a weekend. So, you know, you, you're going to need to make sure you save uh, save somebody around for right. specifically tomorrow. Um, but, uh, but, you know, then make sure you've got enough arms ready to go on Sunday as well. Just kind of make a guess that uh, that these games might happen, right, where, where the, the, the pitching staff and the philosophy is – Carter's in there, pitch missing high, ball one. Uh, looked pretty good, but it's, it's, called a ball. Again, it's one of those pitches that doesn't get called a strike in college. I mean, right. it's not unusual to see that that belt high right around there called a ball. Two outs, runners on first and second. Check swing. They'll send it down. Said he did not go, and it's two and all. What, what I'm getting at is if the philosophy of the pitching staff is going to be, hey, let's get our starter to go four or five, turn it over to a reliever to go uh, okay, you know, five to eight, five to seven, and then you bring in, you know, Christofferson or Llewellyn, somebody late there as this uh -oh. one is driven deep to left. It's big trouble. Near the wall and gone again. Carter's second home run of the game in basically the same spot, but that one was as close to a no-doubter as we've seen this year. He got a hold of that. Funny enough, you know, by track man, he hit it five feet farther than the first one. Um, but that one just felt like it was gone the second he hit it. Uh, good launch angle and, and sent it for a ride lefty on lefty. And um, Tech finishes it up with their second touchdown of the game. 14-3. to three, Second three-run home run for Dylan Carter. Here's Will Burns. First pitch from Gatilla. Swing and a miss. Good comeback there from Gatillo. The, the point I was making was that you get thrown off if, if the starter doesn't make it to that fourth or fifth. And then you've got everybody moving up in, in, the, in the game where, okay, all of a sudden that guy that's supposed to be in five through seven is in two or three to five. And then if he's not effective, then everybody has to move up. And, and so you can see how maybe these games could happen. And it, it's just, you know, plainly put, it, it's kind of happening to us tonight. Sure. And, I mean, you play – you play 55 games a season. Uh, you're not at your best every night you show up. That's just not the way it works as he cue balls one foul. Uh, 
so again, what what matters now is is what do you do? Yep. You know, it, does this does this send you into a hole? Do you feel sorry for yourself? Do you flush it? Because my guess is Coach Heller and and when if Marty comes up, Coach Sutherland's going to tell you you just got to get rid of it. This has popped up on the infield. Derigi at first will look up and he'll grab it for the third out of the inning, but. Texas Tech does a ton of damage. They put up eight runs in the fifth. We're heading to the sixth inning here in Lubbock. Texas Tech 14, Iowa 3. Back right after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Ah, oh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. Iowa trails 14 to 3 as we get to the sixth inning in Lubbock. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. All right, Iowa's got significant work to do down by 11. In the sixth inning, Cade Moss will lead things off for the black and gold up against Ryan Free. He was in the dugout for an extended period, so maybe Iowa can get a few cheap base runners as he tries to warm back up. Left-hander against right-handed hitting Cade Moss. First pitch is a called strike at the knees. Feels like the under four timeout at a basketball game at Carver <laughs> with all the people that are walking out of here. Yeah, folks feel like they've, they've seen enough this evening. Friday night in West Texas. A one pitch to Moss. That's down and in, ball one. So again, this doesn't really, this isn't really about can you come back and overcome the deficit. It's can you do the right things and build some momentum coming into tomorrow. One one to Moss is in there. Called strike on the inside corner. And that's, you know, still having good at bats, put the ball in play. Let them know that you're still here for the entire weekend, right? Those types of things. Well, because you get limited practice time. So when you get an at, when you get a live at bat, you need to do the right thing here. Right. One and two pitch is skipped in the turf. Two and two. And, and you never know what can happen. I mean, they put up an eight spot. We've put up a few eight spots before. It's yep. not out of the ordinary. It's just that the deficit is, you know, is scary to, to look at. So... You just got to do it one run at a time, one pitch at a time. 2-2 two -two to Moss. In on the hands, hit softly to second, and through into the outfield. That'll be an error. The second of the game for Texas Tech. Second baseman charged it hard uh, and then tried to play it off to the side. It was a spinner, and it got by him. You're giving him too much credit. Just, All right. <laughs> he just did, that, ball was, that ball was rolling on the turf. He just didn't get his glove on the ground, goes right under his glove. And, I mean, that's just a play... That's a play a second baseman at this level has to make. Oh. I think Texas Tech may have made a substitution there at second. I don't believe that's their original second baseman. It's Wilmus that's in the batter's box now for Iowa, watching the first pitch miss inside. And, hey, that's how things can get started with errors, free bases, things along those lines. Yeah, that's Cade McGar at second base now. All right, so that's not the same Red Raider as they started with. Started with Austin Green. Got somebody else there now. 2-0 is the count to Wilmus. He's done a good job to be selective in the batter's box. Short lead at first for Moss. 2-0 pitch on its way home to Wilmus. He squares to bunt, pulls it back, called strike outside corner. 
And that's that going to take it all the way. And got it on the low outside corner. You're not going to do anything with that pitch anyway. So good job from, from Wilmus there and, and a good pitch. 2-1 pitch is low, below the knees, 3-1. and one. Yeah, try, uh, tried to go back to the same spot, just missed it a little bit outside. Wilmus has done a good job getting on base today. He walked in the second. He did reach on a fielder's choice, but he later scored in the fourth. Three balls and a strike to him. This is a called strike. Low and in. A little bounce in the catcher's glove there to, to bring that one back up, but it, it was a strike. Full count now. Freeze really done a good job trying to just stay on that low outside corner and, and just been right around it the whole time here. Wilmus takes the 3 2, called third strike. And then he throws just an outstanding breaking ball, kind of up about belt high and, and fooled Ben and, and uh, right turns him back to the dugout. It's a good sequence there by the Texas Tech pitcher. The three two and you get a you get a breaking ball like that. Well, especially when he's been dotting the low outside corner and then he throws a floating breaking ball across the middle of the plate. You're just not ready. Top of the order in Seegers. First pitch strike to him. One down in the Hawkeye six. The Iowa trailing 14-3. Free has been very good. You know, spotting up that fastball, um, just really picking his spot and, and just nailing it. Michael lays off the changeup that drops out of the zone low, one and one. Yeah, a little bit of a spinner there, fell down below the zone. One ball, one strike, one out. Michael slices this foul over our heads. And it'll be one and two. Let's see if the Hawks can get a little rally here, just Again, just let them know we're still here. Yeah, score you know. a run or two. Say, yeah, you got us. Good punch, but we're still hanging around. Got more to play. Next pitch to Seegers. Low and in, ball two. Just, just one of those nights that nothing has really gone our way, and everything has gone Texas Tech's way. They, and they've earned quite a bit of what they've got. 2-2 pitch to Seegers is low. Full count. Uh, but but when, when nothing's going our way, so that brings us down, and they've got good things going their way, elevates them. It, it makes that deficit seem so large. 14-3 to three is our score. Yeah, and the emotional de deficit seems that large, too. Yeah. Three balls, two strikes. Free is set to pitch to Seegers. Swing and a miss. Hey, he did a great job the entire at bat laying off that low pitch and then with a full count, he went after it and missed it. Well, and it, at this point, it's something that the Hawkeye hitters, if they don't talk to each other today, they need to, to they need to make sure that they know that if Free comes back in the game tomorrow or Sunday, both three two pitches have been breaking balls. Mm. You know, he's Good really throwing he's thrown the breaking ball. He, he elevated it to Wilmus, but he threw that one down down low and punched out Seegers. Huxdorf is late on the first pitch. Foul tipped it, but into the glove, 0 and one. And so it's again, how many pieces of information can you gather and learn and, and use for, for later today, for, for the rest of the weekend? Huxdorf, another swing and a miss. 0-2, oh that one looked a bit outside. That one after it, couldn't quite get a piece of it. No balls, two strikes, two outs. Runner on first is Moss. Top of the sixth, Iowa down 14-3. Yeah, Kyle was hoping for the breaking ball and didn't get it. And that time he got a fastball off the outside corner. Ball one, very close. Well wide. Yeah, it was a ball. Not according to the Red Raider fans. <laughs> well, we kind of knew what we were getting into. It's a little bit of a snake pit type of deal down here. One, two is a high chopper up the middle. Shortstop gloves it. Underhand flip to second for the third out. Force Moss out there at second. All right, bottom of the sixth we go. Texas Tech 14, Iowa 3. You're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield.
When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel, the Jill Armstrong team, Wisconsin Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Jill Armstrong and her team strive to make every buyer and seller at ease with the real estate process. Contact the Jill Armstrong team, Wisconsin Realty, for all of your real estate needs. Call 319-631-5455. After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first, get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Wiener, Director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. John Evans, John Leo at Dan Law Field, Rip Griffin Park in Lubbock, Texas. Our first night down here of competition. Bottom of the six, Texas Tech 14, Iowa 3. Going to try to find a way to finish this game on a positive note, regroup, and get ready for tomorrow. First pitch against Texas Tech is at 2 o'clock. John and I will have pregame coverage beginning at 1.30. Brody Brecht against Mason Molina. Molina is a fine pitcher for the Red Raiders. 2-0 and on the season with a 2.93 ERA. 15 of the third innings pitch. He struck out 24 batters in those uh, previous two starts. So a great pitching matchup tomorrow. The weather will be a factor in terms of the ball flying around. Now we can't really tell directionally if that'll be in or out tomorrow. I guess we'll just find out when we get here. Uh, but a couple of really good pitchers tomorrow. Top of the order for Texas Tech in the sixth. It's Nolan Hester. He's scored the last pair of times that he's been up. Last two times. Watches a first pitch strike from Nick Gatilla, who's on the mound. Good pitch. Really popping the mitt now. Just popping around looking at some of the ranked scores uh, around the country because college baseball has been just crazy here to start the uh, – this is a spinner hit on the ground to Derigi at first. He welcomes it in and then touches the bag. Unassisted, out number one. That is his, that is his old buddy, too. So th there's, a, there's a little bit there. Um, but, you know, it, there, there's been some, some crazy results. You've got uh, Oregon Downs, UCLA 6-2, to two, which probably isn't, uh, isn't necessarily that surprising. But you get a little deeper. Columbia 2-5 and five on the year. Ooh. Here's one fouled in the box. This is Harrelson. He tumbles down. Columbia two and five on the year, trying to close out 18, number 18 Alabama. They're up 10 to six. Uh, North Carolina State got beat by Miami. Not, not too surprising. Valparaiso, Midwest famous, famous team, beat Southern Miss six to one. But here's the funny one. San Diego, five and six on the season. Top of the eighth inning is ahead 14 to one over number 16 TCU. TCU. Pick to finish second in the Big 12. Uh, maybe first. first. Are they first? first. Yeah, okay. They just barely edged out Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. State. All right. And they're off to a rocky start. I think they're. I think they're almost close to 500. Seven and five, about to be seven and six, unless they uh, mm. stage of one heck of a comeback. Gatilla with a nice effort there to strike out Harrelson. Harrelson on the foul ball, and then. Harrelson's still got a little limp in his uh, in yeah. his giddy up there as he walks back to the dugout. But really good job from Nick. And, and again, you're starting, you talk about focus and you talk about does Nick want a different role? Does Nick want a bigger role? Well, this is this is how you get it. You you come in in a hard time um, and, and you do you do your job and you do it really well. And so far, Gatilla has been outstanding. He starts ahead on Bazell 0 and 1. Nick has. Hardly missed the zone since coming in. Hawkeye pitchers haven't lived in 0-1 very often today. Another foul ball sent over our head, 0-2. Out of the windup, Gatilla set with the 0-2. Missing high at the logo. Up. 
Bottom of the sixth inning, Tech up 14-3. Gatilla trying to hold them to a zero. Tapped foul in the box. Good job from Bazell to stay alive. And if you recall what he did to Simpson in his uh, last at-bat, last inning, it was a 13-14 pitch at bat when he finally then just lasered a single to right field. So he's hard to make miss. This is lifted in the air to right field. Wilmis will give chase near the line, and he looks up, and he's got it. Good catch there by Ben for the third out of the inning. A 1-2-3 inning for the Hawkeye pitching staff and defense. Good job, Nick Gatilla, to accomplish that feat. Put up a zero on Texas Tech in the sixth. Top of the seventh is coming up right after this. Tech leading 14-3. Back after this, you're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. I'm Mark Wahlberg, and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores, where right now, kids can eat free. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skogman Realty, the area's premier realtor. And Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Handling all of your exterior needs from roofing, siding, windows, and gutters, they've got you covered. Providing free damage inspections and help filing insurance claims. Call 319-343-6376. Top of the seventh inning, Texas Tech 14, Iowa 3. We'll face off against a new Red Raider pitcher. We'll give you the lowdown on him in just a minute. Heart disease is the leading cause of death for men and women in the United States. Don't let any heart condition go unnoticed or undiagnosed. Whether it's a routine checkup or a complex procedure, you want expert care from specialists who know your heart condition inside and out. University of Iowa Heart and Vascular Center advanced trained cardiologists use state-of-the-art diagnostic tools and offer highly advanced, minimally invasive treatment options. It's heart care that doesn't only change lives, it saves them. Make an appointment today at uihc.org slash hvc or call 319-356-7102. All right, the new Red Raider pitcher is Jacob Rogers making his fourth appearance. He does have a one-and-one one record. He also has a start uh, as well. You can maybe assume that that was a, a midweek game that, that he started. He's only thrown four innings this year, giving up three runs, uh, one earned, walked two, struck out four. So uh, first look at Rogers. Uh, Wind-up hybrid as Anthony is the batter. First pitch is a strike at the knees. Yeah, 10 is going to throw right around 90. Nothing uh, nothing too overpowering or crazy, but not really what you'd expect. Uh, Tech isn't going to bring in the closer at this point, so they're going to kind of run through their bullpen a little bit. And It's got a couple wild pitches and a hits batter, so um, again, just looking to try to find some momentum here. Anthony shoots this into center field for a base hit to lead off the Hawkeye seventh. He got all of that one and hit it on a line as Keaton is on with his first hit. The funny thing is, I think if you track the exit velocities of the hitters in the game, Iowa has the harder hit ball. Right. Derigi's been, Derigi's been great. That one from, from Keaton left the plate at 106. Um, the two home runs for, uh, for uh, Carter are in the, in the mid-90s. So it just... Different, you know, he elevated it, did what he was supposed to do, but... Uh, well, we've got access to all these analytics now, and it, it almost makes things more confusing <laughs> at times. It makes you feel worse about some of the right. things at the very least. Want to know is the count to Derigi. Here's a strike that he takes, I, one I, and one. I think the other way to take it, though, is you haven't been overmatched. The scoreboard's going to look like you got demolished and you had no chance. Um, by pure runs, which is the only thing that matters, you had no chance. From a... From a game standpoint, though, you're in it. You know, your, your, your hitters were not overmatched right. by tech pitchers. Um, your pitchers may have been overmatched today by tech hitters, um, but you helped them as well. So you've got things to clean up and 
Birdie Brecht isn't overmatched by too many right. hitters. We'll see a little bit of a different story tomorrow. Two balls, two strikes. Nobody out. Runner on first is Anthony in the top of the seventh. Hawks down 14-3. DeRiggy in the box. He's been on it today. 2-2 two -two pitch in the dirt. Blocked nicely by the catcher so Anthony can advance. This catcher, and, and like I said, I remember uh, remember White from last year just does a really nice job behind the plate and, and you know, keeps balls not only in front of him, but catches a lot of them clean even when they're, when they're skidding in there. 3-2, base hit into left field. Hawks go back-to-back -back on singles in the seventh. Anthony first, and now Dorigi. Good piece of hitting there from Dorigi. Stayed with it, just poked it the opposite way. It was a little low and outside. He probably would have got punched out on strike three, but stayed with it, and uh, much like Bazell did when he went the other way on a pitch like that, just drove it out into, drove it into left field, and Hawks have a couple aboard. Chipping away, couldn't uh, keep... Putting good at bats together. Top of the seventh. Nobody out. Two on for Iowa. Here's Raider Tello. First pitch to him. He drives this deep in the air to right. Get going, baby. Towards the line. And just foul. Mm. He got a hold of that one in the opposite field. And somehow it kept carrying. Ended up going foul. Yeah, and that's back into the breeze. Or you know, He's not really getting any help with that one. Um, kind of poking it right back that way. But caught kind of a flat moving fastball. Just couldn't quite get uh, couldn't quite get around on it enough. Trying to find some turf between the white lines. Raider 0-1 pitch on its way home is low. Nice pick by the catcher there. You've mentioned him a few times tonight. White's doing a good job. That's still him back there. It is. Tech made a substitution at second, but everything else is pretty much straight up. One ball, one strike, nobody out, two on in the Hawkeye seventh. Pitch to Tello is high, ball two. Good take there. Now you're in a spot where you're probably going to see a fastball. Um, Rogers doesn't seem like the guy that's going to cross count you very often here. So you, you take this 2-1 pitch, you get ready for a fastball in a zone you like and drive it somewhere. It's on its way home. Low gets away from the catcher briefly, but no advancement. Three balls and a strike. And now same thing. You know, it, it, I suppose there's one school of thought that says at 14 to three you take a pitch, but on the other side, it's you know good quality at bat. Get your get your hitter swinging. Three one. Tello drives this one deep to center. Center fielder going back just in front of the track. It gets hung up there, and. Anthony will tag from second to third as it's caught out in center. DeRiggi on the backside will advance from first to second. So Tello advancing the runners to second and third. He got a hold of that one, but it just hung up there. Must have had some backspin on it. Good piece of base running there from DeRiggi, too, as he saw where the throw was going, saw he could go ahead and take, take second. So we, he went ahead and uh, took the jog up to second base. We'll have Gable Mitchell now to pinch hit. Hawks making a change in the late innings. Gable Mitchell coming in in the seventh. Switch hitter, he'll bat from the left side. Chance to drive in a couple of runs. Iowa down 14-3. One out, Anthony on third, and Dorigi on second. Mitchell squares to bunt and pulls it back. Ball one. See what Gable can do. 1 0 pitch. Called strike outside corner. 1 and 1. Hawks have had three straight guys hit the ball really hard with those high exit velos. So see if Gable can get one up yeah. there. Gable finding his way in the Iowa lineup. Ooh. Hits this foul off of Chase Mosley's leg over there. My goodness. 1 and 2. That was sharply hit couple of times that Iowa lefties have shot a ball into their own dugout for some friendly fire over there. One ball and two strikes. Chase didn't know he needed a shin guard for the on-deck circle. How's he still standing? That one got him pretty good, I thought. One-two pitch to Mitchell, called third strike. Breaking ball outside, corner, two down. Uh, breaking ball outside, but it was... Uh... Close enough that uh, with a couple strikes, but especially bending in from the outside, uh, pretty generous edge of the strike zone there. But 
You're up there as a pinch hitter. Be ready to hack at it and go. That thing came in pretty hot, too. That wasn't a slow breaking ball. That one, oh, maybe it was. It says 76. Yeah, it felt just, like it was a bit sharper than that. It had some good downward movement. Just kind of a, just a little looper. But, you know, that's one of those that looks like it's enough outside. And it came right back to it. 74 miles an hour. Broke that one in across for a strike. It's Chase Mosley. He's in for... Uh, Peterson, 0-1 pitch to Mosley, goes to the breaking ball again. This far, this one too far inside. Yeah, a little bit more elevated that time. And umpire held off on the strike. 1-1 one, one pitch, high, ball two. And this has kind of been the story of Iowa's night. Couple base runners out there in scoring position. Less than two outs and really haven't been able to maximize those opportunities. And now, Rogers missing low. Some pressure on him here. Two on, two outs. Three one pitch to Mosley. Oh, at the knees called strike. Ish. And the catcher, White, does a good job when he grabs it, you know, kind of bounces it back up a little bit, make it look closer than it seems. He frames it up, and it, it's really a gentle move. There's no jerk to it. 3-2, just low. Oh, we got the call that time. How does how does the other one not – how do you call the other one a strike and not call that one a strike on a just a beautifully executed fastball on the outside part of the plate? Looks like we'll get Ben Tolman now to pinch hit. So Mosley walks, and they've kind of pulled Ben Tallman back now, but I think he's just removing his catching gear. Maybe I'm not. Yeah, my guess is he's taking off the shin guards. And maybe he goes with Blake Guerin instead. He is. And see if we can get the uh, see if we can get the touchdown back. Yeah, they're going to go with Guerin. So a last, literally last second change. So it'll be Guerin pinch hitting. Top of the seventh, Texas Tech 14, Iowa 3. Tech fans aren't happy with how long it's taking Blake to get to the plate, but it, Tallman was ready to go. And so see if uh, Blake can go not loose here. This will be a good, uh, good test for the freshman. Yeah. All right, here we go. Bases are loaded with two outs. The first pitch to Guerin, in there, strike at the knees. Good pitch, outer half of the plate there. Like the way that he just attacked him there. You know, didn't fool around. You got a guy just coming off, finding his bat out of the bat rack. Go get him. It missed high, and Guerin bends back a bit, one and one. Rogers goes back to the windup now that the bases are loaded. Interesting to the perceived smaller guys in, in you know, Gable and, and uh, Chase. Check swing, Garen fouled it in the box, one and two. He threw a bunch of off-speed stuff and really kept, kept, tried to keep him you know, off a fastball. And with Garen, the, you know, 6'6", 240, whatever he is, and challenges him right away with three fastballs. See, now, be careful elevating Garen, one, right? Garen better be ready, though, for a little off-speed. One, two Ooh. is off the plate outside. Decided to go right back at him again. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Iowa trying to get back into it. Late innings here. Bases loaded. Pitch to Guerin. Gets by oh. the catcher, but a strong bounce back off that pad. Nobody can score there. Not going to be able to do that at, at all this weekend, John. A pass ball from third. Unless it ricochets left or right, going to be no chance. Yeah, I mentioned that early in the game. Any any fastball that, that just kind of skips straight through, if the catcher gets no piece of it, it's coming right back to him. And that might be part of how you train your catcher here. 3-2, Garen pops it up towards us, and it'll be a foul ball. You know, you, you teach your catcher, if you can keep it in your frame, stop it. If not, <laughs> turn around and play the ricochet. Sure. Because that ball's humming right back to you. You can throw a guy out somewhere pretty easily. We'll do it again at three and two. Runners will be going. The pitch to Garen is low. And we walked in a run. 
14 to four now, good at bat there from Blake Guerin. Now we get Braden Frazier. Yep, Braden Frazier will come in. And he'll have a chance with the bases loaded. And Braden's got a little pop in his bat as well, so we're gonna get a pitching change maybe. Yeah, we're gonna get a change or a visit. Let's see what it'll be. Looks like a visit so far. Yeah, I think that's a visit. That doesn't have the urgency of a change. It does not. We'll see how long the home plate umpire till his urgency meter clicks over. About now. <laughs> yep, he's headed out there. Texas Tech 14, Iowa 4. Bases loaded with two down. Braden, Le Braden Lysak's up in the Tech bullpen, or Brendan Lysak's up in the Tech bullpen. Now the umpire goes out there to go break this up, and it's like he's part of the conversation now. Yeah, it's very odd that he goes <laughs> ahead and, hey, I really don't think you should throw that pitch. You know, what are you doing here? Are you calm? You're relaxed? <laughs> I mean, if there was some sort of injury, I could see why he was kind of hanging out there. But otherwise, it's usually when they go out there, it's to break it up, not not to hear what they're talking about. Yeah. All right, now it's broken up. We'll be ready to go. It's Braden Frazier. Bases loaded. Not done yet. Down by 10. Trying to do this all with two outs. Pitcher's gone back to the stretch. First pitch to oh, Frazier. Oh. Hit him in the head. Oh, boy. He's all right at it rattled him a bit. It rung his bell. It popped his helmet up. He does and have, Braden's okay. He does have kind of the, the cheek guard, which I think saved him a whole lot of angst right there. Now that was frightening. And we'll go to the top of the order. It's 14 to 5. Seegers is up. Bases still loaded with two outs. Yeah, the last mound visit did some good. That one, uh, that one was not a better improvement. First pitch to Seegers called strike. Outside corner at 87. That's one that Seegers can drive. He can, but I mean, based on what you've just seen, there's no real reason to go taking hacks right now. Yeah, you're right. Back-to-back -back walks and then a hit batsman. No balls in the strike. Pitch to Seegers. Nice breaking ball there. Oh, late call in the outside corner, 0-2. Yeah, good pitch there. I mean, again, for a guy that seems to be all of a sudden all over the map, he's really, really dotted two pitches on Seegers. No balls, two strikes, two outs, bases loaded. The pitch to Seegers in the dirt. Michael swung at it and missed it. And that'll do it for the top of the seventh. The Hawks get two. We'll stretch things out in Lubbock. Texas Tech 14, Iowa 5. Back after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Woo! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Ah, uh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, Start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. Bottom of the seventh inning, and it's Texas Tech 14, Iowa 5. Nick Gatilla back to the mound for Iowa. He's done a really good job so far. Iowa's made quite a few substitutions defensively. Ben Tallman is in to catch. Gable Mitchell is at second. Uh, let's see. Uh, it looks like Chase Mosley in right. And I believe Braden Frazier out there in left. Those are the changes 
for the Hawks with Gatilla on the mound in the bottom of the seventh inning. Pinch hitter for Texas Tech. Need to get a uh, Bulatich. Yeah, is this his first at bat? I don't see anything on him in the stats. Oh, there it is. No, this is his uh, fourth game played. He's a right-handed hitter. Gatilla's missed uh, on the last pitch. It's one and one. Vuletic batting 429. Three for seven, limited at bats right. so far. 1-1 one, one from Gatilla is a call and strike on the outside corner, one and two. Right across the center of the plate. What are they angry about? Yeah, well, even Vuletic, he, he kind of stood there and shook his head and is acting annoyed. 1-2, this is shot to Mitchell at second. Diving plays, got it, throw to first. Yes! Good play, Gable Mitchell. Yeah, that's that That's that energy. Um, you know, Honar made a nice play like that earlier too. Gable goes over to his left, ranges over, kind of flips over the ball, finds it, picks it up, and throws a good ball to Derigi. One gone in the Red Raider seventh. Gatilla winds and fires a first pitch strike to Gavin Cash. Out of the wind up, Gatilla. This is a base hit now to right. Mosley will drop to a knee and scoop it up. Cash has had a pretty good game for Texas Tech. Just squared that one up and drove it on the ground to right. Yeah, two for four now. Um, yeah, we talked about Ben Tolman was ready to pinch hit. He did actually, he came in to catch then. We obviously didn't put Garen behind the plate, so. <laughs> Gable's out there, Brader Fra Braden Fraser's out there. Gatilla again with the first pitch strike. He's done a nice job of that today. Woodcox is the batter. Short lead at first, 0-1 pitch. This one sawed him off, right field. Mosley giving Chase near the line, and it is foul. Chase couldn't quite get there in time, and it's 0-2. Good job there in the seventh from the Hawkeyes. I mean, just to, again, it's really just about the doing doing the right things, and, and Coach Heller mentioned it to the team this morning. You know, it's not about necessarily pitch was high yeah, obviously you want to win all the games but it, but it wasn't about winning it was about honoring the game you know doing the right thing um, I think they showed a little bit of that in the seventh inning took some good pitches was able to scratch across a couple runs haven't quit yet uh -oh. this one is hit high and deep to left and it's going to leave the ballpark that one was hit well by Woodcox. He got all of it. All three home runs for Tech today have been beyond that left field wall. They've really scooped them out of here. And that's a two-run shot, 16 to 5. That one was legit, though. The uh, <laughs> track man dead on that one is 424. Um, he turned on that one and got it down low. I mean, it was a good pitch. Um, down inside part of the plate, and he just dropped the bat head on it and just hammered it. Walks back down by 11 now. First pitch from Gatilla. This is lined to right. Mosley's there. He's got it for out number two. And more to the plate. You know, when, when Tech has hit one of those balls hard, they've elevated it. When the Hawkeyes have hit them hard, they've line drived them, which is great. It's the approach that the Hawkeyes wanted to take. We thought we were going to get a little bit windier day today. You wanted to hit a lot of line drives, and uh, the Hawks have done a great job with that. Problem is those, ball, those balls don't elevate and go out of the park. First pitch outside to Dylan Carter. He's been outstanding for Tech today. He's been on every time. Two home runs, each three runs. Staking claim to Big Ten or Big 12 player of the week early here on a Friday. Yeah, we're going to have to keep our eye on him. Uh, going back to your point about the Iowa hitting is the 1-1 is swung on and missed, 1-2. and two. We're talking about the line drives. That's what we were looking for against Coe in the midweek, right? That was the, that was the emphasis against the wind, that type of 
that type of deal. I was found the line drives. Unfortunately, the line drives have found Red Raiders. This one-two pitch is hit foul back to the pad. Yeah, I mean, you talked about, uh, you know, in the top of that inning, Tello's ball that he hits to center field had the same exit velocity. He just hit it to center, didn't have quite, you know, so didn't get it down the left field area. Uh, the two balls hit before that from, from Keaton Anthony and, and Brennan Derigi were, were both hard hit line shots, but, you know, eight, 10 degree launch angles aren't going to go very far. Right. <laughs> 2-2 two, two pitch. This is hit on the ground. Foul to the right side. And so a good battle between Gatilla and Carter. Nick's made a couple mistakes, um, obviously with the fastballs that got turned on, but um, he's pitched well and, yeah. and, and done a nice job um, eating, eating outs here. And he strikes out Carter to... Put him down for the first time tonight. Good job there by Gatilla. A two-run home run gives Texas Tech the 16-5 lead. We're headed to the eighth in Lubbock. Back after this, you're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. Welcome back to the broadcast booth in Lubbock. John Evans, John Leo. Appreciate you listening to Iowa Hawkeye baseball tonight. So far, the bad guys are winning this one 16 to 5. We've got two more to play this weekend. Tomorrow at 2 o'clock, Sunday at 1 o'clock. Look forward to those games against the Red Raiders to wrap up this weekend. A little bit of a pitching change for Texas Tech. They'll go with Brendan Lysick. Lysick's third appearance on the season. He's thrown an inning and a third, walked a guy, has yet to allow a hit, a walk, or a run. So good job by him so far. Well, you know, when things went to the bullpen early, we thought maybe we'd have the advantage. Unfortunately, uh, Texas Tech scored enough runs where maybe they haven't had to use their best people out of the bullpen. And we've used, you know, Gatilla. You know, he's, he's probably one of our better guys out of the bullpen too. So we're kind of dipping in our pool and and tech hasn't really had to use any of their solid guys it would be my guess yeah we haven't we haven't seen the ace arms and if I, I think i was looking it up earlier lysic i think he had one appearance last year yeah one appearance last year it was against west virginia and didn't didn't uh didn't record an out gave up a couple hits three runs um so he's had a little bit better go of it so far this year in the early going Huxdorf leads things off in the Hawkeye eighth. Iowa down 16-5. First pitch to Kyle. Fouled back. 0-1. Lysick is from New Jersey, if I'm reading that correctly. Goes all the way down from... Willow Wick. Waldwick, New Jersey. Huxdorf watches this go by for a called strike 0-2. It'll be about regrouping for Iowa the, the next couple of days. And uh, early in the season like this, you know, Iowa with just one loss through the first 11 games. 0-2 pitch to Huxdorf, waited on it and fouled it back. Uh, well, the good news is you can still win the series. Right. There, there's nothing that happens tonight that means you can't win the series. And so that's the attitude the Hawks will have to take now as, as they get through this one and move into tomorrow. 0-2 pitch is inside one and two. You, you think about it, this game, it, you know, it just kind of is what it is. Just probably didn't play well enough to this point to win. And uh, 
it's, it's a challenge for tomorrow. Okay, how are we going to respond, right? Because the same thing kind of happened at, in, in Round Rock when we dropped that Friday game to Sam Houston. One-two pitch on the ground is short. Welcomed in there by their shortstop thrown across out number one. Yeah, you, what, four hit there in, uh, in Round Rock on Friday night and, and pretty soundly, soundly thrashed six to nothing there. Yeah. You know, I mean, you get shut out on a Friday night is not exactly what you're looking for. And um, Hawks rolled back the next day and beat the, beat the number one ranked team in the country and, and, uh, and then a good win on Sunday against K-State. So um, Responded well after a loss. Here's Anthony. First pitch to him is a called strike. Yeah, I think your more um, your more troubling thing, or the, or the thing you more have to figure out, is um, the Friday games have been tough. Yep. You, you know, you win you win the opening day in in eleven innings. Anthony skies this into shallow center. Carter sprinting forward. Shortstop goes back. Second baseman is there, and it's the second baseman who makes the grab that's Lopez yeah they made another change um, he normally normally plays some shortstop but, but now in at second base um, but you know to kind of finish that you know you had you had round rock you had um, you had mobile where you win the game but you win it 20 to 8 um, so it doesn't really feel very good and then now of course tonight uh, so that's four four Fridays in a row that uh, you know, for a team that over the last couple of years um, has really owned Friday night, um, you know, really, uh, you know, been ahead 1-0 in a lot of these series, you know, you're going to have to kind of take a, take a good look in the mirror and see what uh, what that means. DeRiggy is the batter, counts 1-1 one and one with two down in the top of the eighth. Bases empty, Iowa down 16-5. to, to five. And that could be just as simple as, you know, Ty making an adjustment and, and you know, eating something different for breakfast. You know, <laughs> sure. I mean, it, it can be, it, it doesn't have to be a, oh, oh my gosh, that everything is broken. Let's, let's reevaluate the world. It's just, you know, just make sure you're doing what you're doing intentionally. Yep. That's a really good point. Two balls and a strike to Derigi. Here's the pitch. Check swing, didn't go, and it balls out of the zone low, three and one. I think that this is, some of the things that the coaching staff was talking about, always clean up the little things. You know, we kind of heard that the past few games, 3-1 pitch to DeRiggy is down low, ball four. So Brennan's on once again tonight. Uh, and, and maybe didn't clean up the little things fast enough, and, and it kind of caught up to us today, right? That, that's just kind of what it feels like. And and could be a, a learning experience for the, for the players, could be the, the message of the team is, hey, look what happens if we give the free bases, if we walk the leadoff guy for four innings in a row, look what happens. They put up, you know, three, one, two, and eight, right, in those innings where we lock, walk the leadoff guy. Yeah, funny when Nick didn't walk the leadoff guy in the in the sixth inning, he put up a zero. Right. Um, you know, so it, it gets better. And, and you know, maybe, um, you know, they, they need to kind of figure out, you know, in Florida, they didn't have a ton of free bases. Obviously, Brody pitched five five perfect innings, which is rather unusual as well, but... Raider Tello hits this on the ground to third. It's picked up there, thrown across for the third out of the innings. The Hawks get a base runner in Derigi. Bottom of the eighth we go. We'll pick up our conversation when we come back. Texas Tech 16, Iowa 5. You're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Ah, oh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? Yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. At MidAmerican Energy, we want to help keep you safe around power lines and electrical equipment. Always assume a power line is energized, even if it's on the ground. To avoid the risk of an accidental shock or electrocution, avoid touching a power line with anything. And when you see high voltage warnings on transformers and substations, stay away. We care about you and your safety. Get more tips at midamericanenergy.com. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy.
Bottom of the eighth inning, Texas Tech 16 to five over Iowa. Gatilla back to the mound for the Hawks and for another inning of work. Done a pretty good job out of the bullpen uh, this evening. I mean, the, the best part about what Nick's done tonight um, is he's eaten a bunch of innings that, that needed to get eaten up. And so, uh, and, and again, really hasn't walked a guy. Three hits, unfortunately. Um, one was a solo home run, and, and the other one uh, was followed by a two-run home run. So, I mean, he's been, um, he's been efficient and around the zone. Um, and just made a couple of uh, a couple of very hittable mistakes that that Tex made him pay for. Nine hitter Will Burns leads off the eighth. Called strike on the outside corner. Burns today is one for four. A one is outside. He's the one that pounded that ball into center field, wasn't he? Uh, left yeah. center there, driving a run. He does have an RBI double and a run scored. 1-1 one, one pitch from Gatilla. Check swing. This pitch barely missing. It's 2-1. and one. Yeah, see if Nick can battle back here. Looks in for the sign. He's got it from Tallman. The pitch is Just outside. outside again, 3-1. and one. Nick working quickly, the pitch, swing and a miss, three and two. Now we'll see Brody Breck tomorrow against Mason Molina. Brecht one and oh with a 2.19 ERA. This is fouled back. Molina two and oh, 2.93 ERA. Yeah, and based on what we've seen tonight, Brody will need to be sharp. Obviously they'll take pitches and, and they'll take their walks and so 3-2, shot into deep right. This one carrying well, one hopping off the wall in the gap. Rounding second, heading for third. This is a lot of speed from Burns. He's in with the leadoff triple. Easy triple, wow. And they are one of the, uh, that was in their, that was in their game notes too. They are a team that really likes to take three bases. And they, uh, they add to it. It was their... That was their 10th triple of the year right there. Yeah, which triple triples aren't something that's that easy to come by. And, and uh, it was, <laughs> it's such a weird combination, the sacrifice fly thing, the triples. Uh, but, yeah, very good. It's Jarrett Curtis to pinch hit for... The Red Raiders in the in the bottom of the eighth. They're up 16 to five. Runner on third, nobody out. Curtis is a freshman from Cypress, Texas. Catilla starts him with the first pitch strike. Second one is on the way, and swung on and missed 0 and 2. He's got four at bats and a couple of hits. He's played in seven games. Been on as a defensive replacement. Out of the windup, the 0-2 pitch on the ground to the right side. Mitchell is there, bobbles it, picks it up, throws it. He is out Ooh. at first. The run scores on the backside, 17-5. I'm a little surprised they don't headphone that one, but I suppose it's 17-5. That's almost insulting. <laughs> yeah. Probably not too eager to get that one looked at. They got the run in. Another pinch hitter here. This is Damian Bravo. 0 for 6 on the season, right-handed hitter. One gone in the eighth. First pitch to him is outside ball one. Actually thrown three and two-thirds inning as well. So uh, He's kind of all over the place. Huh? Little dual threat guy. Catilla's 1-0 is in there for a called strike. And maybe after he went 0 for 5 in the first game he hit, they decided to make him pitch. <laughs> he pitched after that. He's only made one other appearance since then as a hitter. Pops this one up into center. Huxdorf has to jog forward, still moving forward, and he's got it for the second out of the inning. And Bazell. Yeah, not a pinch hitter this time. They'll go back <laughs> with the three-hitter Bazell. 
17-5 is our score, bottom of the eighth. Just not the Hawkeyes' day this Friday afternoon. I'd love to find a way to sell you some excitement, but it's 16 to 5. It's uh... now we're just kind of running out of time, running out of outs to work with. Texas Tech is undefeated at home, and it'll only get probably more raucous as the weekend goes on. 1-0 pitch from Gatilla is outside 2-0. And and they lost to Rice 3 to 2 or 4 to 2. And lost to Texas A&M in 16 innings, 3-2. to two, Or vice versa, I think. It was 4-2 to two with A&M. They beat them uh, in 16. And both those games were down at the Astros Park. Two balls and a strike. So, yeah, neutral site. Texas Tech hasn't played a road game yet. But yeah, we were... Uh, we were stuck in well, I was half of the uh, the travel party that got stuck in Atlanta and we were back at our hotel at at 1 30 and uh, the game was still going on 3-1 lifted into center uh, right field rather and Mosley is there he's got it third out of the inning yeah you had something to help you fall asleep that night didn't you we, we well the game fortunately ended before we found a hotel room but uh I'm not sure fortunately for who, I guess, but yeah, over <laughs> over five hours as I looked uh, as I looked in game notes, I think it was five hours and 24 minutes or something crazy like that. Oof. You'd need you'd need tons of hot tea and lozenges by then. Yeah, no kidding. Top of the ninth we go. Iowa down 17 to five. Last chance coming up. Listening to Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanya Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate, so there's more brain power focused on you. Because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at UIHC.org. Top of the ninth inning, Iowa down 17 to 5. Just not our day today. Get back at it tomorrow against the Red Raiders. 2 p.m. first pitch. John and I will have pregame coverage starting at 1.30. And we'll really be excited for that one now, right? With a little with a little edge with our team, probably. Yeah, have a little uh, little feistiness, hopefully, and uh, always fun to see Brody pitch. In for a treat this weekend. But Brody Breck tomorrow for Iowa. Lysak returns to the mound. He's a lefty, and with Gable M Mitchell being a switch hitter, he'll bat from the right side this time. First pitch, low and outside, ball one. Yeah, Gable got uh, punched out on a outside curveball last time. We'll see what he has now from the other side of the plate. 1-0 pitch way high and outside. 2-0. The fun thing about Gable is he's just, he's always going 100 miles an hour. Full motor all the time. Yeah, that's paid off in a, in a lot of ways in his early career. 2-0 pitch in there for a called strike 2-1. We were kind of working him over. Our food showed up this afternoon at, what, 3.20, 3.30, and a good, uh, good 30, 40 minutes before we had to be on the bus, he came down to grab his food, fully dressed, ready to go. It was, he was on and ready to rock. Three balls and a strike. Mitchell trying to get on. Isaac ready, 3-1, fouled back, 3-2. Good hack there. 
Lysak's done a good job keeping the ball. Ball around the plate, but really hasn't caved in and, and come across the middle at all. Three balls, two strikes. This one's in the dirt low, and Mitchell is on with a leadoff walk in the Hawkeye ninth. Good cross count pitch there as he threw that breaking ball that just kind of a teaser starts out starts out belt high, but it, but a really nice job from Gable to to not offer at it and just take the walk. Again, still an opportunity for the Hawks to build some sort of momentum. We'll go to Chase Mosley now, especially for these guys that haven't seen a lot of at bats. You know. Gable hasn't been at the plate a ton. He's a freshman. Chase has a lot of a, a lot of JUCO at bats, but you know he's still adjusting to the speed of this game. So right. th this is a good at bat for him, good series of at bats for him. Try to find his power. Wind blowing out right to left. A one pitch to Mosley is low. Ball one. And he showed us some pop in Alabama with the with the grand slam. And had a double he's, as well. He's coming around, right? 1-1 one, one is way high to the backstop. Rolls back to the catcher. Throw down to second is in time. And they got Mitchell. Any other ballpark, any other time of day, any other place, and Mitchell is there easily. But like we've talked about, mm. well, and the, the importance of that one is what is your secondary lead like? You know, are you... Are you far enough where you can you can get it going? Because if your feet are moving, then you have a fighting chance. If your feet are at a dead stop and then you have to restart them, you're going to get gunned out like that. That pitch bounced so hard off the pad, the catcher just had to turn around. He didn't have to move. Yeah. He turned around, the ball bounced right back to him, and Mitchell was halfway to second. Yeah. And it's just 86 mile an hour fastball. It's nowhere near home plate. Um, ricochets off and and that, that'll do it for him for some reason or another. A pitching change <laughs> in the top of the ninth with the Red Raiders up 17 to 5. We'll keep it here for this one. I gotta admit I didn't see this coming. A, a one out pitching change with the bases empty in the middle of an at bat. Yeah, the, the, I think <laughs> the middle of the at bat part is the uh, is the part that surprises me a little bit was I mean I know he sailed into the backstop but you got an out <laughs> well they're going to go with Ethan Coombs Coombs making his third appearance 4.5 ERA he's only thrown two innings giving up five hits three runs one earned four strikeouts hasn't walked a batter he is a right handed pitcher looks to throw it pretty hard in there so are you guessing that the uh, senior's not going to get a lot of time as the year goes on, so they're going to get him into a situation like this? Must or, be. Or what's your, uh, what's your other logic of why you make that pitching change right now? I couldn't tell you. I'll lean on that one with you. Get him a little extra experience, I suppose. I mean, did throw. In the meantime, we'll pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Interesting stat note on Ethan Combs uh, made 13 appearances in 2022, 505 ERA, but of those 13 appearances, 12 were starts. So probably a midweek starter and um, kind of what uh, what we found his role. And so you go ahead and you get him into a game where uh, if you're going to expand his role as the season goes along, you go ahead and get him some get him some opportunities here on the weekend and see if he can get. Uh, well, get out the hitter with 2-1, and I don't remember my baseball rule book, though. I don't remember with two balls and one strike. I don't remember whether this batter goes to the, uh, uh, whether it'll go to Lysik now or whether it'll go to, <laughs> to Coombs. I don't, I don't remember. So rare, such a rare occurrence. Two balls and a strike to Mosley. Nobody on. First pitch, well, first pitch from... Coombs is downstairs, three and one. Fourth pitch of the at bat. What an interesting dynamic for for Chase too to have the left hander throw you the first three pitches and then have the righty come in. And so after all that, Mosley walks. <laughs> 
And another runner on for the Hawks, although Mitchell was caught stealing. Mosley's on with one in the top of the ninth. It's 17 to five. We'll get Garrett Christensen in his first weekend action. Oh, 12. Eh? God, I never trust my eyes at a distance. Jeez Louise. <laughs> Tallman's in for an at bat. Was inserted a couple innings ago. And Coombs misses again. Maybe his task will be to throw strikes. Maybe that's what they're trying to figure out if, if, if Coombs can do it. He hasn't thrown one yet. If we have another pitching change, so help me. <laughs> Next one to Tallman is low. Four straight balls fired from Coombs. So now technically he has walked, Chase. He ha yeah, in a roundabout way. Top of the ninth. Last chance for Iowa, but down by 12. This pitch is low, 3-0. and oh. hey, You just really wonder the... They're going to have a little bit of a mound visit from the catcher. Yeah, this guy started 12 games last year and did a lot of pitching. Did a lot of pitching. And uh, to have him come in in a game that's 17-5. to yeah, Through 71 in the yeah. third innings last year. Maybe he's coming off some sort of injury. We'll have to, we'll have to find. But I, otherwise, the, the drop-off has been significant for Mr. Coombs, which is you know unfortunate for him. But for him to come in in the ninth inning with one out in the middle of an at-bat. He's thrown five straight balls. He's kind of curious. He gets six straight now as another walk. Yeah, I mean, and, and I mean, Lysig struggled too. He walked Mitchell to lead off the inning. I mean, the only reason the bases aren't loaded is they have a, a trampoline trampoline that sits, you know, yeah. 30 feet from the home, from home plate as the ball ricochets back off and was able to throw Mitchell out at second. So now it's Frazier. Frazier. First pitch is a strike and a sarcastic cheer from the remaining Texas Tech fans. I don't think they're sarcastic. Their own guy and at home, you'd get that for sure. At Iowa City, you'd get that for sure. But no balls and a strike to Frazier. This one is inside, a bit high too. One and one. Then he got creative and went with the breaking ball. Yeah, and it looked. It didn't look too bad, but he totally missed a, totally missed his spot there. Well, that's the hard part is when you miss. When you miss and you haven't really shown the umpire, you're going to hit the strike zone. 1-1, one, one, swung on and missed by Frazier. Frazier, you got a guy that hasn't thrown one strike, and you go chasing that fat, you go chasing that breaking ball in the dirt. Mm. One ball, two strikes. One out, runners on first and second, top nine. Next pitch to Frazier. He swung at the same pitch, same result. He's down on strikes, two down. Excited for Coy Sarsfield here, though. He's going to get a chance to pinch hit. Last chance for the Hawks is Coy Sarsfield. Coming in, pinch hit for Seegers. Coy's had a couple of at-bats. Didn't get a hit and got hit by a pitch. So see if he can uh, scratch out his first one here. First pitch is in the dirt low, 1-0. and oh. I'm sure the guys will get on the bus, get rested, and, and really excited to play tomorrow. Here's a pitch that gets by the catcher, and this time the runners will be able to advance because it was an off-speed. It didn't bounce back off that pad. Off-speed pitch that the catcher just kind of touched a little bit to keep it uh, keep it from ricocheting off. Sarsfield with a chance for a base hit and a couple of RBIs out there. 17 to 5 Tech with the lead. Coombs ready 2-0 pitch. Called strike at the knees. Good fastball there. A little, little low in the zone but got the call.
He's got good run on his fastball. He's got good movement. Just hasn't been able to find the zone with it very much. Off the mark again, three and one. Texas Tech, they do have somebody loosening in their bullpen. Yeah, this is one that's going to be Tech still under 50% for strikes today. 3-1, there, called strike. Inside corner, full count. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. The Texas Tech fans rise to their feet with this being the last breath for the Hawks in game one, down 17 to five. 3-2 pitch to Sarsfield. Check wow. swing, he went around, and that'll do it. Texas Tech, they take game one. The Red Raiders win it 17-5. to We'll enter postgame right after this. You're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Hey, everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg, and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlbergers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores, where right now, kids can eat free. You probably know that a natural gas leak smells like rotten eggs, but what does a gas leak look or sound like? If you hear a whooshing or hissing sound, see dirt, dust, or water spraying from an area, or you get dizzy or queasy, leave the area immediately, then call 1-800-595-5325 once you're safely away. See midamericanenergy.com for more safety tips. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. John Evans and John Leo from Lubbock, Texas. The Red Raiders win game one tonight by a final score of 17 to five. John, just, just not our night. Uh, that might be the understatement of the season so, <laughs> so far there. Um, you, you know, again, it, it, I think the part, uh, the part that surprised me the most is you, you, look, at, uh, you look at Tech, they, they didn't throw 50% strikes. Um, but yet, when they needed to, they found a way to get one. When Iowa hit one hard, it was right at somebody. Um, so now you do the best you can to wipe it away. And, and uh, good news is it's, it's tomorrow afternoon. We don't have to wait till tomorrow night to play again. And we'll see Brody Breck tomorrow for the Hawks to try to rebound. Iowa dropping the 10 and 2 on the season. Tech is up to 13 and 2, still undefeated at home. We're going to try our best to and that stat, that streak for the Red Raiders uh, by the time this weekend is over. Can, can you muster up any positives at, from, from tonight, John? Um, hit a few balls hard. You know, I mean, it, there, were, there were a lot of good at-bats early. And so, it, you know, if, if a couple of those two-out things turn your way, um, you know, which, which Iowa has been very good at as the season's gone along. So maybe that, maybe those roles reverse a little bit uh, a little bit tomorrow, and Iowa finds a way to uh, to pile on some runs. All right, we'll take another break. When we come back, we'll we'll recap the game a little bit more in detail. Iowa drops this one 17 to five. We're back after this, you're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us.
Texas Tech, they win game one of the series, 17-5 to over the Hawkeyes. Let's discuss a little bit how we got there. Iowa uh, got things started in the second with one run. Texas Tech would answer with three, though, in the second. If you just look at the, at the line score, Iowa scored five runs, only six hits tonight. Uh, two errors. The Hawks left 14 on base, and that, that is a number that's going to stand out. Texas Tech with 17 runs on 15 hits, uh, two errors. They left seven on base. You know, you kind of had a feeling that maybe this game would be a little bit strange when in the second inning we had the bases loaded with one out and we hit into a into a line drive double play, and you thought, man, that felt like a real big opportunity missed. Well, and, and that was it. You know, as, as you asked me before the last break, it was it was what's the what was the difference? And you know, it was that it was the timely hitting. You know, even against Pepperdine, Iowa wasn't particularly great, or maybe it was the South Alabama when they went four for six and with runners on and with two outs and, and did all those all those good things. But tonight, Iowa created enough traffic, maybe not enough to score 17 runs, but enough to make it a competitive looking game. Um, which could have changed kind of the whole dynamic of it. But instead, Iowa hits 125 with two outs, 130 with runners on base, and 083 with runners in scoring position. So um, you, you compare that to, to Tech hitting 308 with, with two outs, 478 with runners on base, and 412 with runners in scoring position. Um, you got a pretty big pile working against you. We drew 12 walks tonight. You know, I, I feel like if that happens throughout the course of this weekend, we're going to take one, maybe both. Tech threw 200 pitches on the night, 99 strikes and 101 balls. Mm. Uh, so, you know, Iowa hitters, again, did what they needed to do, had a couple of errors from Tech that, that helped Iowa score some runs. Um, but when you needed a hit, the Tech hitters bared down, or the Tech pitchers, really were able to get the out. You saw Brody Breck do that against LSU um, two weeks ago. Tech did a really good job of that tonight, but um, to your point, if if Iowa continues to do those, put those opportunities out there, my guess is they'll, they'll get through it. Ryan Free gets the win. Ty Langenberg gets the loss for the Hawkeyes today. Texas Tech wins at 17-5. We'll get to some highlights, and then we'll close things down from game one this afternoon, this evening. Back right after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down, not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first, get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Weiner, director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. Iowa drops game one of the series, 17-5 to to Texas Tech. Let's go over some of the highlights from today's game. Some Hawkeye highlights. Iowa got things going in the second inning. They uh, started by Sam Peterson with a single. 2-1 pitch to Peterson. He squares to bunt, puts it down the third baseline. Third baseman comes to pick it up. Throw to first. Not in time. Peterson beats it out. All right. And part of that uh, sacrifice attempt that turned into a hit for Peterson helped set up Cade Moss to bring in the first Hawkeye run on a sacrifice fly. Nobody out. Bases loaded for the Hawks. Top of the second. 3-2 pitch to Moss. Line drive into right center field towards the gap. The right fielder's back. He's got it. Runners will tag. Here comes the throw into third. And safe. The run will score. Tello is in there. Hawks have the lead 1-0 and advance a runner to third in the meantime. Red Raiders would score a few before Iowa got active on the base pass in the fourth inning, trying to get creative and used a double steal. 
2-1 to Wilmus. Runners take off. Ben pulls back the bunt. The throw to third. Not in time. The double steal. It's on. And it works. And then Kyle Huxdorf, he put the ball in play and was able to bring home a run. One ball, one strike, one out. Bases loaded. Pitch to Huxdorf on the ground to the right side. First baseman's got it. Throws it to second. He dropped it. One run is in. Another one's going to score. And the Hawks are in business. Down by one after the error on the Texas Tech infield. That's what we'll take right there. And then a great defensive play by Gable Mitchell in the seventh, although the game was getting a little bit out of hand for the Hawkeyes. But Mitchell with a great effort defensively. 1-2, this is shot to Mitchell at second, diving plays, got it, throw to first, yes! Good play, Gable Mitchell. All right, that'll do it for our highlights. Iowa drops this one 17-5. The Red Raiders uh, got us today in game one, but we'll be ready for game two tomorrow. Hopefully some more highlights and, and hopefully calling a Hawkeye win. John, a final thought. Regroup. Regroup. <laughs> Flush it and move on, right? Yep. All right, Texas Tech wins this one 17 to 5. We're back tomorrow. First pitch at 2 o'clock. Pre-game coverage begins at 1.30 from Lubbock, Texas. Thanks for listening to Iowa Hawkeye Baseball tonight. For our great uh, yeah, producer down the line, board op Bobby. Thank you for your work tonight, Bobby. Great job. John Evans, my color analyst. I'm John Leo saying so long from Lubbock, Texas, where the Red Raiders win game one. We'll see you tomorrow for game two. Every day is still a great day to be a Hawkeye. Some are just a little bit better than others. So long, everybody. Hawkeye baseball has been brought to you by Homewood and Home 2 Suites, preferred hotel of the Hawkeye Radio Network, Iowa's corn farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association, and the Iowa Corn Promotion Board. When corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Oak Knoll, an active life care community. University of Iowa Healthcare, changing medicine, changing lives. And by Wimmer's Meats, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation on the Hawkeye Sports Network.